Hello everyone and peace of the Lord to all of you. I hope my voice can be good and clear. Please invite your friends. And as we promise you, if you uh, invite a friend, we are going to contact Allah and he will give you a holy membership with the holy uh, website of the holy Android Tits. Uh, and uh, you can imagine what you can get as a benefit from this uh, holy membership. Uh, first of all, you will become a Muslim. Number two, uh, you will become an idiot. Uh, number three, uh, you will become the joke of a Christian prince. So, <clears throat> if you want the membership, just let me know. You know, you can order for it. Uh, today, our topic is about the strength of Islam. You know, Islam is so strong, so strong to the point if you speak against Islam, they want to kill you. <laughs> to the point if you take the Bible with you to Saudi Arabia, they will arrest you. <laughs> To the point they cannot build, they let you build a church or pray to your God. But Islam is so strong. To the point you cannot preach to Muslims. You cannot tell them about your religion. You cannot be, tell them about belief. If you're not an atheist or anything, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, because Islam is strong. Mm. I mean, because Islam is strong, we close doors, we close windows, we close the curtain, we have bars on the windows, we have, you know. I mean, because Islam is strong, Pakistan government keeps sending YouTube asking them to block my videos i mean do you see how strong islam let us face it islam is so strong you know as i know pakistan is a country which has nukes you know what i mean like they have they have nukes right Let's show you just how, how strong Islam is. The Arabian Prophet, we receive a legal compliment from the government entity, 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 sorry, entity, uh, regarding your content. After a review, following the content was blocked. <laughs> Crazy yet, Prophet. <laughs> I mean, do you see how strong it is? Pakistan. I mean, those Muslims, they have a very strong religion to the point they have a whole department of Islamic police monitoring the internet. Who is criticizing Muhammad, the strong Muhammad? Hmm? In YouTube, in Twitter, the government of Pakistan, they have a file for me. And this is a strong religion according to Yasser Kadhi. Very strong. You know, I mean, I keep receiving those complaints one after one. But the good thing, because you know, I don't keep my videos, otherwise I will have long line. But anyway, I want to hear Yasser Kadhi tell us about the strength of Islam. In the beginning of this video, he starts talking about like there is a person his name is Lafagani. He mentioned that uh, the Western, they took civilization actually from us. And then he said, this is not really too much accurate. You know, we have to be honest here. We took from the Greek and uh, we build in it. And then we give it to the West and they build in it. The fact they did not take anything from the Greek and all the Muslim the scientists, they call them Muslims. Those are atheists. In fact, if you check each name of them, you will see how they get killed or tortured or they've been kicked out of the land. So the Muhammadan, anyone, he become famous, they claim he is a Muslim. Anyone. When he's alive, they step on him. He's a kafir, he's a zindiq, he's a filthy, he's against Allah. A eh, few hundred years after, they say he was a Muslim. As simple as that. You know, I remember when I was in high school, uh, we, we have like uh, the whole uh, section about uh, uh, Arab scientist, Arab scientist. So the, the teacher was speaking, he put the name on the, in the board. He wrote Al Khawarizmi. And you know, like uh, Arabic, all of us, you know, and uh, they are Arabic is our first language. Khawarizmi doesn't make any sense. What Khawarizmi? Usually, you know, such a like a word you use. When you are mentioning that the person he is coming from like certain area so it sound like a name of an area and he belonged there so i said sir where is a this is it says a arab uh scientist they said yes I said okay he's an arab what does that mean what, what this word mean 
said Khawarizm, Khawarizm, Khawarizm. <laughs> you look at Khawarizm in the map, you will find that this is way far, like at that time it was part of Persia. So I said, but this is how, <laughs> if he is in Khawarizm, how this guy is an Arab. <laughs> So they steal even the one who is a Persian, they make him an Arab. The, go the Persian Gulf, they make it the Arab Gulf. Uh, 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 Israel, they make it uh, the, the, the land of the Arab. Jerusalem suddenly became the, the city of Muhammad. I mean, you name it. But today, Mr. Yasser Kadhi is going to tell you about some of the strong or the strongest things the Muhammadan they have in their religion. What is that? Let us hear him. Intellectual ideas. We took what the Greek had, we built on it. We handed it over to Europe, they built on it. Oh. And they went to the moon and back. Oof. They took our knowledge, let's be honest. A correction. The Prophet Muhammad, he went to the moon and came back before them, just to correct you. So even that thing is not accurate, my friend. It's a Prophet Muhammad who took the first mule with two wings in his... I mean, have you ever heard? Of a flying donkey, his wings in his ass. It sounds like a tornado. I mean, this Muhammad, he have a great imagination. Or imagination. I mean, look, he did not put the wings in the front, not in the middle. He put it in the ass. Two wings in the ass, in the hips. So what are you talking about? The, the Western are not the first one who went to the moon. It was the Prophet Muhammad who went way behind the moon. Where moon? What moon? moon? Nothing was nothing, you know? And all of this, all of it in eight, in eight hours. He went to the end of the, of, of the space. The end, the end, you know? He went Allah, where Allah, he planted his tree. It's called Lutet tree. A Lutet tree have leaves, each one of them in the size of an, uh, of an elephant ear, and they are made of gold. What a beautiful tree. And you can walk underneath of it for 100 years. Does that make it big, supposedly? I mean, I thought Allah is bigger than that. If Allah can lay down under a tree, the distance of it is 100 years. That means it's still short. <laughs> 100 years in the speed of what? Camel or walking? No. What is that? Anyway, anyway. So, okay. So we took from the Greek and we gave to the Western. The Western went to the moon and they came back and... Here. Again, we have to be a bit more critical rather yeah. than superficial. Right. They took what we gave them and they built on it to where we are today. True story. So indeed, it is true that we did a little bit, no doubt about that. But in the end of the day, we stopped doing what we were doing. What are you talking about? Aren't you burning France today? Aren't you making street dirties in England? Aren't you smuggling, trafficking human to Europe from Pakistan? 500 Pakistani, the drone in the front of Greece. You are doing a lot to Europe right now. What are you talking about? Continue, continue, please. They took over and they took it to a whole different level. Oh, this like the whole different level. Okay, yeah, yeah, we did it. We did it, not you. Okay. And what is the level you have? Like, uh, the, what, what is the string of Islam? I'm trying to understand. One point. Another point can be said here, actually many points can be said, that in fact, and this is my main point of the whole I love it when a Muslim, he say, in fact, because everything in Islam is a fact. Listen, when you go to the heaven of Allah, you will have 70 years orgasm. That is a fact. In fact, I know that my people in the Middle East, their orgasm right now is 69 years and nine months. But in heaven, Allah will make it 70. It's a fact. I mean, Muslim, they are the one who talk only about facts, brother. And uh, later we can talk the fact about the Gog and Magog and the fact of the flying carpet of Suleiman. And Suleiman debating an ant and he lost the debate miserably. And the fact that Suleiman, his shaitan, he if all his wives and Suleiman was working as a dummy in the market carrying fish, the edict, he left the palace just because he lost the ring. And the fact that the wife of Suleiman, she gave the ring to the shaitan because she thought this is Suleiman because when he go to the bathroom, he don't take the ring of Allah with him. All those are facts. And not to forget to mention that Prophet Muhammad used to F all his wives in one night without washing until the end. 
That is a fact. It must be true. I mean, that's normal in the Middle East. This is why Middle Eastern are number one people in the world who buy Viagra, because obviously they are so good in bed. Right. Mm. It's a fact. Remember, in Islam, we bring you nothing but fact. Mm. Continue. Khatira. This <laughs> tactic might be semi-valid, it's not wrong, but it is not also the most correct or the best tactic. Really? Why? Remember, he is teaching the Muslim how to refute the Western when they say to them, you Muslim, what you have? So he's teaching them now how to refute the Western. So now we have a new tactic. This is a war Zoom uh, uh, ch uh, chat. <laughs> what the tactic? What the tactic? Brother, tell us what the tactic? New tactic. Because in the end of the day, our strength, what we call our trump card, no pun intended, Eesh. our strength is not in Ibn al-Haytham no? and al-Khawarizmi no. and Ibn Rushd no. and al-Razi. That's not our strength. Where? Where? No. This is not where we will win the debate. Where? Our strength is in what Allah blessed us with a knowledge of who we are, why we're here, a knowledge of heaven and hell, a knowledge of morality. I, I love it. Who is a Muslim would like to join us live on air and tell us why we are here according to Islam? This person, he just mentioned morality. Morality. Who is a Muslim would like to join us live on air and teach us the morality of Islam? Morality in Islam? Like what? Like what? Can you give me some information? E Iman. This is where we will always be better than them. I wish we could measure not GDP, but akhlaq. I wish we could measure akhlaq, moral. I mean, this guy is coming from Pakistan, a country where everybody is corrupt. A country where, according to Google, they are number one country in the world search for sex with donkey. Sex with who? With donkey. Morality. What is number one nation? Number one nation, sexy web search. Call Pornistan. <laughs> and they keep winning always the, the top, not like 2010, 2007, 2003, 2005, 2000. I mean, they beat everybody. <laughs> Brother, this is where we win. Morality. In morality, we are in the top. We have all the proof and the reverence when it's come to morality. Uh, don't remind me, your prophet, he killed. Uh, tell me more about morality so we can uh, just remind me of his stories. Respect to elders. Respect to elders. Prophet Muhammad, he ripped a woman. Her name is Ummu Qirfa. Ummu Qirfa. He ripped her two parts when she is alive. She is more than, you know, between 86 to 90 years old. Respect to elders. He tied her legs, the evil Muhammad, to two camel, and he forced the camels to run in two different directions, and they split her two pieces. Can you imagine how much Muhammad he respect the elder a woman she is in the age of his grandma? And by the way, Yasser Kadhi, as long you respect the elders in Pakistan and Middle East and Islamic countries more than the Western, what do you do for them there? Is it true they sleep in the road? Is it true they don't have medication? Is it true that they are beggars for food and nobody is helping? Is it true that in Europe, an old man, he will not sleep in the street unless he's, he's losing his mind? Is it true that in the Western, they give you a salary if you are an old man? 
Isn't it true that in the Western, those you say you, we have better moral than them? If you beat a dog, you go to jail. But if you beat, if you beat a woman in Islam, you are a good man. Is it true that your prophet he said a man should not be questioned why he is beating his wife? And you are talking about respecting women and children and elders. Huh, not to forget to mention Prophet Muhammad marrying a child, if we can correct marriage. Morality. A man should not be questioned. Let us see if we can find the hadith. Give me a second. Invite your friends, guys. Invite. Come on. Maybe you don't want me to come every day, don't you? Are you bored of me? Just say it. Say it. You know, last uh, time I, I asked people if you are bored of me, and they said, yes, do you know what I did? I came back after 15 minutes. I'm very sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't affect me I do my work I serve the Lord who care who like me who don't a man should not be questioned why he is beating his wife yes sir Kad, he is asking us to respect the morality of Islam the woman she called the police or maybe her son the police answer. This police of that night with you, uh, 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 sir. Uh, uh, my, 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 my father is beating my, my, my mom. Can you please send some, some, somebody? He's beating her. Listen to me carefully. Prophet Muhammad, beat me up on him. He said that if a man he beat his wife, police cannot be involved. What the heck? This is the morality of Islam that if a man beating his wife, police cannot involve? Exactly. Why is that? Because he's the husband, and the husband can be his wife. What if he's an idiot? What if he killed her? No problem. If he killed her, just give her a call. <laughs> and yes, Rakadi. <laughs> it's telling us about morality in Islam. My friend, morality is so good. The Prophet asked him for the hand. Of a child, she is not even a few days old, she is an infant. Um Habiba, the morality of the Prophet. The Prophet is licking the face of Osama and say, I wish of Osama he was a girl, I will marry her, I will dress her. And not, he, not he will marry her, like he will marry her to somebody, supposedly, and he will dress her. I mean, he's a boy. While you are thinking about a boy, he's a girl. But Chabazi, the morality of Islam that we have a culture. Promote Bachabazi. Do you know what Bachabazi? Who don't? Who of you do not know what Bachabazi? If you do not know what Bachabazi, you're missing a lot. I mean, this is the religion of morality. Bachabazi. I'm typing in Arabic. Hold on. Bachabazi. Brothers and sisters, in the country which is full of morality, they have something called Bachabazi. What is a Bachabazi? Listen, they are not homosexual. And Rotets, he said, oh, he, no, Muslims, they are not, they don't support LGBT. No, they don't support it, but they are, all of them, they are the LGBT in those countries. This is not, those are the mullahs of Islam. They bring little boys and they made them dress like girls. And after the party, after the dance with them, they rape them. They rape boys. Look, this video is a block because I'm not in the age which is suitable for to see this. Bachabazi. Look, what the heck is that? <laughs> what kind of... <laughs> <laughs> can the heart the homosexual nightlife of Islamic <laughs> of Afghanistan <laughs> criminals 
I mean, I, like, if you watch the videos, you you will, you will see how disgusting it is. And then they school us about what? About morality. Morality. They are the best of morality. I mean, the Western, those are boys, those are not girls. The, the, the one you see in front of you in yellow, this is not a, not, a, not a man. This is not a girl. This is not a female. So they claim that they are against transgender, but they are creating a huge number of population of transgender. It's a business. Morality. I don't know. I'm so confused and so conf what can feel so conf conf convinced. Excuse my English one, because sometimes I speak French one. Oh boy. The morality, the morality that you are. <laughs> uh, what about secret wife? Look, look, we have secret wife religion. No way. Yes, brother. Ooh. It can't be true. Secret wife? The morality that you don't even dare to tell your wife that you want to have another wife. And not only you practice... Uh, uh, multi bud share like multi women sharing in the bed, and you, even you see like when somebody do such a thing, he knew it's wrong. But in Islam, this is legal. It's it is it is Islam. It is what it is, you know. And he speak about morality. So listen to this uh, video clip here, in case you are interested. This is Lil Dawa. He brought a bunch of women. They are Muslims and they are hot. And I, how I know they are hot? Now the Muslim, they will say, look what he is saying about Muslim women. Well, if they are not hot, they will not say what you, you just heard. Listen carefully what they say. I'm not the one who's saying that. Yes, pass. Would you die for her? Yes, pass. If your wife was okay, would you get a second wife? Yes, pass. There is not a conflict between a man loving his wife and a man wanting to be polygamous. I agree. I get the polygamous part. I get the whole wanting to have more intimacy with more than one woman. Yeah. Muslim men, because they are so moral, they like to have intimacy with more than one woman. She understand. The Muslim sister, she understand. And the Muslim boys in the front of them, they are understanding what she understand. He want to have multiple intimacy. Like she did not say even multiple wives. She said intimacy. So the purpose of it is just, excuse my language, effing. Effing. What is the purpose of the second wife and the third wife and the fourth wife? She mentioned it. Intimacy with multiple women. Yusuf is inviting us to Islam because that will save us from fire. Yusuf, my friend, I don't know if you know your religion. According to Islam, every Muslim will go to hellfire. Why you don't call me to show you the Quran? I mean, the Muslim, by the way, they give us something. Brothers and sisters, convert to Islam because that will save you from hellfire. Hey, Yusuf, who is going to save you from Iran when they attack you, the American? Who is going to save the Kaaba from the missiles of Iran, the American? Who is going to save Emirat and Kuwait and Bahrain from Iraq, the American? Who is going to save you from the Chinese and the Russian, the American? Where is Allah? So don't tell me about hellfire. You are in hellfire already. I mean, your land is messed up. Disease, illness, with all the money you have, until now you are the most illiterate nations in the world. Instead of building schools, you build mosques. You go to the mosque, what they teach you? Let us see what they teach you in the mosque. Do you want to see what they teach you in the mosque? Listen to this. So, inshallah, I am trying to raise 500,000. Yeah, he's trying to raise, yeah. Ah, they teach you in the mosque that you should buy halal food for cats. Cat halal food. Cat 
Halal food. And halal raw cat food. There are countless health benefits to this new raw diet. Check them out on Instagram. And they say to you that the Muslim do not have any innovation. Shouldn't we remember that the first one who created halal cat food is the Muslims? Isn't the cats now are so thankful and praising Allah that they are Muslim cats? So the cat in Islam, she eat halal mice and halal cockroach and halal fly. Halal cat food in the chat, in the, in the, in the video of Mimi Lili Dawa. Is this, is, is it, this is a top technology? Do the Russian have that? No. Or from Russia, do you have that? No. Vladimir, do you have that? No. Okay, what about you, Mr. Richard? Absolutely not. Okay, what about you, Mr. German, uh, uh, Ivan? You don't. Okay, translation, you don't. Okay, what about you from, uh, you know, from Japan? Mr. Suzuki. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. Wait, so I didn't think, I don't know, some, something. Mr. Sushi, you want to say something? You agree? Okay. So Sushi agree that the Japanese don't have halal cat food. Uh, I mean, what about the Jews? Hey, uh, you know, uh, Moshe, uh, do you have anything to say, Moshe? Habibi, Christian Prince, Habibi. We cannot create such a thing, Habibi, because this is a halal cow food. We have kusha for human. We don't have kusha for animals. Are you sure? Well, I'm very sure. I'm very sure. Okay. Well, you know what, the Jewish boy? The, the, the Muslims, they did beat you. Look, they have halal cat food. Habibi, Habibi, listen, Habibi. You want to feed the cat halal food, kusha food? You must be crazy, Habibi. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, somebody he liked my German. Yeah, actually, I was born in Germany, you know. I was like, uh, because what happened, my dad, he was hijacking an airplane in the Amazon River in uh, Indonesia. And then, uh, you know, they were like hunting, somebody hunting by mistake, uh, uh, Vladimir Putin. So he shot the airplane, even though he's like, he was, you know, he they, they used to work with my dad as pirate. But anyway, by mistake, you know, things happen sometimes. So, you know, he uh, like the like airplane fell down and I found myself in Bangladesh. And that's why I became a German. All right. So uh, this is a true story, by the way, Sahir Bukhari. Don't ask me for the, for, for the, the what? The chain of narration. <laughs> so uh, what we learn when we go to the, uh, to, uh, uh, to the mosque, you know, like in education and, uh, you know, I mean, we beat everybody. Okay, what you beat them beside the uh, halal food, cat food, whatever. Majuj and Majuj. Uh -huh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about them in the Quran. And they are mentioned specifically in a hadith, brothers and sisters. Specifically. I mean, if there's anything left, just chip it. Quran and, and specifically in the hadith. I mean, if there's any other source in Islam for things. It's like somebody, a doctor, he is giving you good news. By the way, your, do your, your wife, she will have a baby. And then you ask him, do you know the gender? He says, yes, I know. It's going to be either male or female. <laughs> that is a prophecy. So specifically, brother. Okay, go, go. Now, one thing that a lot of people make a mistake, which I've seen, you know, people of knowledge, is that they try to comprehend and understand. You see? The strength of Islam that Muslims don't comprehend and they do not understand. Are you with me with the strength of Islam? The weakness of a Muslim is when he try to comprehend and he try to understand. This is something very special. You know, this religion is so strong to the point you should not try to understand, neither comprehend. Hmm. Oh, one thing that a lot of people make a mistake, which I've seen. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. What is the mistake? You know, people of knowledge is that they try to comprehend and understand. How is, who is your Jujur Maju? Yeah, who? Where are they? How could they stay in a cave for so long and dig, dig, dig? Dig, dig, dig. They're about to come out. And obviously there's, it should, some say there's, <laughs> there's <laughs> yeah. et cetera. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Parts of it, you know. Are you sure originally you are not a cat? 
I mean, the Hindu, they say, like, if you have a bad karma, good karma, stuff like this. I mean, sometimes you talk like a, talk like a cat. <laughs> you and me, hijab. <laughs> Your voice comes suddenly from the nose, and the car sniffing for a, for a mice or something in the corner. <laughs> okay, so, so what now? What is the conclusion? Oh, I'm not authentic. Whatever you do, I'm trying to get into that, okay? You know, and then... Oh, please, he don't want to get into that, he, you know, because he's a person of knowledge, but he don't want to get into that. He know everything. Um, Dhul-Qarnayn, and, you know, you know, there's so many speculations, etc. And a lot of people come, and then... Don't speak dirty. What do you mean a lot of people come? Are you talking about Muslims in heaven? Are you saying that Muslims in heaven, all of them, they will come in the same time? Yes, because it's 70 years orgasm. They start all of them in the same time. They finish orgasm in the same time. They take the second women in the same time. And they have again orgasm in the same time. So they come all together. But I'm assuming you are not talking about that come. You are talking about people who are coming, not coming. Yeah. They're like some people even get into doubt with this matter. Some individuals even leave Islam. And I'm like, what's the issue here? What is the issue here? Because Islam is so strong. You see, the topic is Islam is the strength of Islam. What the issue here? You see, Yasser Kad, he, he will explain to us the issue better. Ajuj and Ma'ajuj is actually, for our modern times, I would say, one of the most, if not the most problematic of the signs of Judgment Day. I thought Islam is so strong, it turned to be problematic. Yes. I mean, you have a video about the strength of Islam, and now you are talking about Muslims leaving Islam because Islam have a lot of problems. Mm. A lot of Iranian converting to Christianity. Yeah, this is not true. This is, uh, I mean, this is not old. This is not new, sorry. This is old. This is, uh, I mean, it's happening every day. Yeah, but this is from a long time uh, ago, not only now. The, the biggest converted church in USA is Iranian church. You can search them. They have TV stations. They have radios. They are very well organized. They have, you know, uh, uh, hundreds of churches. Yeah. But in, a, in Iran, yeah, the number of Christians is growing so fast. But this is not only in Iran. Iran, uh, in Syria, Kurdish, a lot of Kurdish converted to Christianity too. Uh, in Iraq, uh, uh, not to mention, not to forget to mention China. And I believe actually the biggest country in the world who is going to become a Christian in the future is China. Is China. Christianity is a spreading in China is in a speed you cannot even imagine. You cannot even imagine with all the discrimination of the Chinese. What about India? You see Modi and the, the Hindu parties in India, they are discriminating horribly the Christians. They are attacking their villages, burning their churches. They do the same as the Muslim in Pakistan. Yet the Christians in India, the number of them is, you know, because they, why they are doing that? Because a lot of Hindus convert into to, to, uh, 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 to Christianity. With Muslims, the Muslims, they have different tactics. They do uh, jihad, love, and those stories. Christian, they don't. Christian, they are just being a Christian with their neighbors. And the neighbors, they love Christianity and they join the faith in Christ. And that makes the 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 uh, the Hindu priest go crazy and ask the map to go mop the go and burn churches and burn uh, uh, houses and etc. And you know because in the West we don't have real leaders like Trump. He went to India. He shake hands with Modi and the same as Biden. But none of them mention what they are doing to the Christians because Trump and Biden both are scumbags. However, Christianity will grow. It doesn't matter how much discriminate. In fact. The more you discriminate us, the more we are strong. Christianity is not in a good shape when we are relaxing. This is my experience. Christians are way stronger and way more faithful when they are discriminated. This is exactly what happened in the first 300 years for Christianity. They were discriminated to the point they throw the Christians, our church fathers, they throw them to the beast to make them food for fun. For fun, still those, those Christians who they are amazingly strong believers, they refuse to deny Jesus. They say to them, deny Christianity, we will not kill you. They refuse. And this is here we see why we laugh at the Muslim when they say the Christian, they, you know, they corrupted their book. I mean, those people, they paid their life, literally.
So why in the world they want to corrupt their book? Even the stupid Quran is speaking about something really amazing about the Christians. That when a, a Jewish king, his name is Abu Nawas, he occupy a part of Yemen or all of Yemen. And then he made a field or he dig in the ground big huge hole I don't know what's wrong with this website Rose no it's working in chapter 85 verse from verse number one you go you will see here in verse number four the one who were killed by burning them alive. Who are they? Those are Christians. So how in the world those people, they will change their Bible? They refuse to deny Jesus. And the result is the whole town. The whole town were burned according to the Quran. The story is in the front of you. So the Hindus, the Muslims, even the Jews, they make a counterfront enemy of Christ to fight Christianity. Are you going to contain it and stop it? No, the fact is going to be the opposite. We will be stronger and we will grow and you will be defeated for your God is the devil and you are evil. And we will not do the same you do. We will not burn a synagogue of a Jew, and we will not burn a mosque, and we will not burn a Hindu a temple. We will not. We are not evil like you. And this is why we will, will win. Going back to the story of Gog and Magog. So the strong Islam is so strong as long you don't ask questions or you don't try to comprehend. But then, what is the strength of it if it's a blind faith and you cannot ask questions? And what kind of a religion this religion is, you as a part of it, not a stranger, you don't and you are not allowed even to ask questions about it. So how you can explain to me what is your belief if you yourself don't dare even to ask and to comprehend? Um, and and dig 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 and just when they're about to come out come once again to my channel Majuj and Majuj Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about them in the Quran and they are mentioned specifically in a hadith brothers and sisters now one thing that a lot of people make a mistake which I've seen you know people of knowledge is that they try to comprehend and understand how is who is Yajuj and Majuj where are they how could they stay in a cave for so long and dig 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 and just when they're about to come out and obviously there's issues, some say there's issues with that narration, etc. Some parts of it, you know, are not authentic. Whatever it may be, I'm not trying to get into that, okay? You know, and then Dhul um, Qarnayn, and you know, there's so many speculations, etc. And a lot of people come, and they're like, some people even get into doubt with this matter. Some individuals even leave Islam, and I'm like, what's the issue here? Let me tell you guys the crux of the matter, because there are a lot of people and a lot of individuals who have tried to make people understand this and even push the narrative of these certain ex-Muslims, you know, that, you know, people uh, are leaving Islam because of this, apparently, yeah? Uh, which I just heard one individual and most of his reasons were because, you know, he couldn't have intimacy with a lot of girls or something along those lines, yeah? Okay, I don't think it was this issue at all, yeah? It was more of his desires. The point is this, that we fall for this and then what we try to do is, in return, is like, I know, let's try to bring it down to a logical level and try to explain it in a logical way. Now, I've seen many people do these videos, okay? Many people, one of those was, uh, was uh, Dr. Yasser Qadi. You know, the thing is now, it's Ramadan. I'm not here to talk about anybody, uh, etc. Okay? I don't want to make anything to ruin my fast, my Ramadan, etc. All I'm just saying is, obviously, there's a lot of things I don't agree with Dr. Yasser Qadi. Uh, and there's things I agree with. All yeah, yeah, yeah. The drama is, you know. So, you know... Islam is very strong and Islam is very good and Islam is wonderful and Islam as you can imagine it's the most uh, strong faith on earth but people leave Islam the second they ask questions. Actually for our modern times I would say 
one of the most, if not the most problematic of the signs of Judgment Day. And it has caused many of our youth to question, to doubt. I myself have met people that have actually left Islam because of these types of tales. And we have to be honest and frank and not pretend as if this doesn't exist. Perhaps some of you are not accustomed to hearing people speak like this, but my philosophy is different. We are dealing with the crisis of people leaving our faith, our own children, our own young men and women. And of the reasons why is that we are not answering some of these issues that they bring, and we dismiss them. The issue of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is something that doesn't just occur in the Hadith. It is explicit in the Quran. Standard medieval interpretation of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is the following. This is what you find in Ibn Kathir. You find it in the tafsir literature of a Samarqandi and of a Tha'labi. And basically, this is the mainstream interpretation for our classical and middle ages of Islam. If you look at any book of tafsir, any book of history, the notion was the following. Ya'juj and Ma'juj are a bizarre exotic tribe in the nether regions of the world that have been trapped by Dhul Qarnayn thousands of years ago and they're still trapped to this day. That Ya'juj and Ma'juj are a living tribe blocked to this day behind the wall that was built 4,000, 5,000 years ago. That wall miraculously is still there. People can see on the one side and on the other side you have these savages that Allah knows how they're eating, drinking, replicating, whatnot, and they're still there for <laughs> eons and eons and eons. Dare I say, anybody who knows science and geography and modern civilization yeah. cannot believe that there is a tribe for 4,000 years trapped behind a wall. <laughs> I mean, so you're is admitting that his prophet is a fraud. There's a guy, his name is Yusuf. He's saying, can he call me? For sure you can call me, my friend. Just text me in Skype. I will, I will take your call right away. Just get text me. I will call you. So are you going to believe, he's saying to you, are you going to believe in all the poopoo Muhammad he mentioned in the Hadith? Remember everything he just said now, he's debunking every statement Muhammad he said because it's Muhammad and the Quran said there is a dam there is a wall the wall even built from you know from iron and copper he's saying now with all the science we have who in the world want to believe in this and imagine this guy is the same guy in the other video speaking about the strength of Islam so the strength of Islam is People live in Islam. Why? Because who in the world want to believe? And remember that those Gog and Magog, they are not like a nation of 1,000, 2,000. No. The ratio of them, according to Muhammad, is 1,000 to 1 human. Which means, from a, 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 not only that, even when one of them, before he die, those Gog and Magog, he will have 1,000 boy child before he die. So, uh, so if they are in the time of Muhammad, they were 1,000 to 1 human, their ratio. And then you calculate the number that each 1,000 of them, he will make 1,000 before he die. So what the ratio by today will be? Billions of trillions. Billions of trillions. Where we can find them? We cannot find them. The story is a fiction story. Muhammad is a madman. Years ago, that wall miraculously is still there. People can see on the one side, and on the other side, you have these savages that Allah knows how they're eating, drinking, replicating, whatnot, and they're still there for eons and eons and eons. Dare I say, anybody who knows science and geography and modern civilization, you cannot believe that there is a tribe for 4,000 years trapped behind a wall. I mean, if you believe this, any that's your position. I, I cannot believe it. I'm just being... I cannot believe it. <laughs> and then, brother, the Islamic strength is getting even more powerful. Siyas al-Qadi should be shut down. His channel should be shut down. He should never be allowed to open his mouth. Oh, what are you talking about? Brother, are you serious? 
What? What, 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 what you just said? Shut down. His channel shut down. Should be shut down. His... What? Mr. Qadi should be shut down. His channel should be shut down. He should never be allowed to open his mouth. Mr. Qadi should be shut down. His channel should be shut down. He should never be allowed to open his mouth. Yasser Qadi should be shut down. His channel should be shut down. He should never be allowed to open his mouth. Why, why, why? Is that because Islam is so strong or the more he talk, he is exposing the stupidity of Islam? So now, instead of saying, you know, okay, his guy, I mean, the Muslims are honest people, by the way. Why is he upset? Because that guy is saying what he should not say. This is what he's saying. He should shut down. Or shut, shut up, you idiot. Shut up. Shut up, you stupid son of Muta'a. You are telling everybody that this is impossible and this is stupid. What's wrong with you? Yes, Sir Qadi should be shut down. His channel should be shut down. He should never be allowed to open his mouth. What about you? Should you be allowed to? I mean, there, there is tons of videos of you hilarious. <laughs> about Islam. Wallahi. 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 This person is a disaster that has, has uh, engulfed this ummah. When you do a deep dive is when things get very, very awkward and difficult. No. No. If you want misguidance, if you want misguidance, listen to Yasser Qadi. The preservation of the Ahruf, is it one, is it three, is it seven? Yasser Al Qadi, I accuse you. You are worse than the layman people. Isn't this is the same guy, I forgot his name, the one who was kicked from Al-Azhar University because he was, anyone remember his name? Anyone knows the name of this guy? Because I saw him in, uh, in the park in England. There's a guy, originally he is from Syria, uh, I don't want to be, I don't want to say without uh, being sure. He was kicked from Al-Azhar because he was a homosexual. If somebody know his name, let me know, please. So, all of them, they make poopoos. And you know the Muhammadan, uh, they take opportunity to bite each other. They love to bite each other. That's why Muslims don't trust Muslims. When I was... In high school age, I go to Muslim houses. You know, kids in my age in the school. I go, I sit with their sisters, I sit with their mom. I, you know, I respect them. I don't, uh, you know, I, I respect the privacy of the family. But if somebody is a Muslim from the same classroom, he come, all the sister will hide. The mother will hide. With me, they sit, you know, the Muslim when they when they are inside the house, they wear very revealing clothing. You know, they are they don't dress the same as outside as inside. So when I go inside, as like I'm one of the family, they trust me. Muslim, they trust Christians. They never trust a Muslim. The second a Muslim, he knock at the door, all the females will hide. All the females will be in the behind the doors. I go. His sister, his sisters, they bring the fruit, they bring the tea, they bring the coffee, his mom, his sister, they sit with us, we talk, everything is normal. A Muslim boy show up, everybody disappear. They don't trust them. And this is the truth. God is my witness. God is my witness. Tell us more. When things get very, very awkward and difficult. No, no. If you want misguidance, if you want misguidance, listen to Yasser Qadi. The preservation of the Ahruf, is it one, is it three, is it seven? Yasser Al Qadi, I accuse you. You are worse than the layman people. You failed. You failed. This is not a joke, brothers and sisters. The issue of Ahruf and Qiraat caused confusion to somebody whom the Prophet said, if you want to listen to the Quran directly, listen to Ubay. Live. We don't care. The most advanced <laughs> of our scholars, they're not quite fully certain how to solve all of the unanswered questions in there. Yes, Sir Qadi, when you see him on a video, click X. Traditional understandings of Ahruf and Qiraat <laughs> cannot answer some of these pressing questions that are now being poked. When you hear him, close your ears.
lest you want to be uh, exposed to fitna. The standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. This quote unquote renowned scholar, he's a da'i. He does not qualify to be a scholar. I would advise Dr. Yasser Qadi to stop indulging in this because this is not his field. He's not an authority to... to... This guy, he have high school. He want to teach Yasser Qadi what he can say. <laughs> See this guy? <laughs> this guy, he, uh, in the speaker corner, he told some Christians, is that the language of a Christian? He say this to Muslim women, suckle me, are you stupid? She is the one, she said, that Jesus was playing with his mother boobs. Your sister was a whore. I respond to her, I said, in fact, it's your prophet who said to me to say to you, suckle me. So the coward, he don't dare to debate me because we get them busted in everything they say. Like he made a video about how the Quran knew that the Pharaoh is exist in this time, not at that time. So I made a video about it and I, I made him shish kebab. And since then, the guy is so crying. Anyway, so now Yasser Qadi is a poo, poo and you are the doo, doo You are the doo, -doo not the poo, poo To say, if I were to give you a blank mushaf, hmm. yeah, and uh, and tell you to write what is munazzal verbatim from Allah into that mushaf with no human interference, would you write something which corresponds? It's with not an easy answer. It's not an easy yes or no. I think this should be an easy yes or no, though. Yes, I'm <laughs> I, 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 you, you see, this is what this is what a cheating code. You know, cheating. So Mimi Hijab now he's trying to make him say, "Come on, say yes, easy answer. Come on, you know, you cannot, what uh, what are you doing? I think this is an easy answer. Yes or no? Come on, come on. He's telling him what to say. Yes, sir, Kadi. You know, he's not a kid like them, so he is not going to change his mind. This is not an easy answer because we know that there's a hose in the narrative. So the stupid Mimi Hijab, he insists. To ask the question, Yasser Qadi told him, don't ask this question in public, in the video there. And the stupid Muhammad Hijab, actually, what happened? After he had this interview, he deleted the interview. And what happened, there is an ex-Muslim, he was watching, he took a copy before he deleted. And then he published it again. And he spoke about why Mimi Hijab, he deleted the video. They thought if they delete the video, Nobody will notice. That's it. I mean, we, t we take it off before the everybody notice what happened. But by taking the video, actually, that even more make more attention for the video. <laughs> and now everybody speak about the whole in the narrative. And not to forget that the miracle of the Quran is debunked may be staying in Islam for the right reasons. How? I One of the reasons I accepted Islam was the scientific miracles. I'll be honest with you. And now we know that this whole scientific miracles was actually nonsense, not totally. Not totally nonsense. Then he made another video. He is so upset, saying yes, 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 it is not. There is no scientific miracle. And for some odd reason, funnily enough, like as if they thought that it was a slip of the tongue. I'll repeat it again, very carefully. The scientific miracles argument in the Quran got debunked. Yeah, I hope my tajweed was on point. So what is left? What is left? I mean, Gog and Magog debunked. The flying carpet debunked. Muhammad is born four years after his father. Debunked that he claimed to be he is from Abraham and from Ishmael. Because we do not know even who is the father. Uh, Muhammad, he went to Jerusalem debunked. Muhammad, he went to the seven heaven debunked. Muhammad, he, he did not, you know, Muhammad, he spoke to his God, never spoke to Allah, debunked. So, I mean, what is left? The strong Arabic language in the Quran debunked. The history in the Quran is a, is a, is a shish kebab. Like Mary, the sister of Aaron. Right? Can you post your full debate against Omar? I don't know who is this guy. I have, you know, I have thousands of people. They call me. I don't remember their names. Anyway. Uh, as you see, Islam have a strength. But where it is, the strength of Islam is 
we should not share the truth. Without lies, Islam dies. So they were lying to you for all those 20, 25 years about scientific miracles of the Quran. And it turned now to be that there is zero scientific miracle of the Quran. It turned to be that Muslims are leaving Islam like an avalanche. Why? Because the stories of the Quran, not only it does not make sense, it is so stupid. It's so dummy to the point even a dummy person cannot believe in it. So what is the strength of Islam? If there is anyone here there to call me and tell me what is the strength of Islam, what is left? Even in the sword, they are strong. What sword? If all the Muslim now, they attack Israel, all of them together, Israel will wipe them out. Even in the sword, they are nobody. What is left? Uh, the guy said God regretted for creating mankind so has not all knowing well my friend this is a uh, uh, this is a stupid argument because when the Bible speak about regret that's God speaking about that he is sorry for a human being for what he did to himself and we can't find the similar story in the Quran but Muslims are ignorant Anyway, if you have somebody, a Muslim, want to ask me the same question, let me let him call me so we can laugh at the same question or any other question. All Muslims are welcome to call me and all of you, I challenge every Muslim, by the way, who call me and uh, he can record the, the argument with me and post it in his channel. I challenge them all. I would love to see every Muslim who call me to download the video after he call me and post it everywhere and let everybody be the judge. You know, if Christianity is funny, they will laugh at us. If Islam is funny, they will laugh at Islam. No problem. Just give me a call. So what is the strength of Islam? Anyone can tell me? Muslims themselves, they cannot find the strength. Ask no questions. Chapter 5, verse 101. Verse 102 says, because the similar questions people before you, they ask them and they left the faith. They left the faith. Anyone, any Muhammadan, he would like to call us and join us for free. I want to see if you Muslims can stand it and stay as a Muslim after you call me. And you bring all your ability uh, in the fight. Even you can call with a team. Not, not one, not two, not, not a normal team. Like, you know, you can call Zasar Qadi and let him join us. You can call someone funny like Zakir Naik. Bring whoever you want. I never say no to anyone. But don't bring me a Muslim woman. Do we have any Muhammadan there to call? If you are sure from your religion, then I don't think there is a reason for you to be worried about calling us and proving Islam to us to be good. Because as you see, all your cleric in the internet, the famous one, they are saying things really crazy. Scientific miracle, it turned to be a lie, which means every single video in YouTube about scientific miracle, it was a fraud. Fraud. Because when you say it was debunked, that mean what? Do you know what does that mean? That mean you were all lying. Otherwise, you cannot debunk facts. You can debunk lies. So how a Muslim, he is a believer. And then this believer, he fabricate scientific miracles to make people believe Quran is from God. And then after 20, 25 years, and I am the first one who wrote books to get it busted. Now for sure, before I start writing my books, I was making my videos, laughing at all those scientific miracles. So 
all those years, the Muslim, they were saying Christian Prince is lying. And now it turned to be to what? The truth. Christian Prince was saying the truth. The Quran not only does not have scientific miracle, the Quran is a book of errors. Prove me wrong. Just text me and I will call you. Uh, may I call you about contradiction in the Quran? No, I want Muslims, my friend. I want Muslims. Only Muslims. I want Muslims. Please, if you are a Muslim, text me. If you are not, then there's no need. So let's listen to more and see how Islam is collapsing. Modern civilization, you cannot believe that there is a tribe for 4,000 years trapped behind a wall. I mean, if you believe this, any, that's your position. I, I cannot believe it. I'm just being, I cannot, I, I find this very difficult to believe. If so what does that mean exactly? This is not only about you believe or not. This is about Muhammad being a liar. Yasser Qadhi in the mosque. I don't know why the Muslims get upset from me, but they go to the mosque saying to them, Muhammad is a liar. I, would, I agree with him. He just said, if you believe that there is a wall and there is people you know, behind that wall, you want to believe in that, this is your business. I, me, myself, I cannot believe. Right? Me, myself, I cannot believe. But all these stories are authentic from Muhammad himself about the wall and even Muhammad, he claimed that during his time, he woke up and he was terrified, horribly terrified. Why? Because Gog and Magog, they open a small, tiny hole in the size of his finger in the wall. Do you see it? He, sh he starts shouting and screaming, saying, A we to you, Arab, from what is coming to you. A we to you, Arab. Read it. Prophet of Allah, P-B-U-H. This is kind of acid, you know. I don't know if you know about acid. Uh, like if you do chemistry or stuff. You know, I do a lot of chemistry. Like... Uh, I receive a lot of chemistry email from Muslim women. They say to me, like one of them, she said to me, so what if your voice is so sexy? I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And this is B-H-U-B, uh, uh, whatever, something, you know, chemistry. So like, uh, you, you know, like you're, I hate you, you know, a lot of hate. So the Prophet came to visit me one day, frightened, and he said, La ilaha illallah. This is the voice of Liyadawa. You know, before he take a hormone. Uh, and there is not true God, but no, no, I'm proud of it, proud of it. We to the Arab, what the heck, what's happening? Because of an evil which has drawn near the false prophecy. So Muhammad, he claimed 1400 years ago, you know, that the Arab now soon, Gog and Magog are coming to them. And now, we see nobody. And Yasser Qadi is saying, if you believe in that, if you believe really there's those millions of people behind the wall, ah, well, it's up to you. For me, I cannot believe in the, in the poopoo of Muhammad. That's what he's saying. Otherwise, any Muslim is welcome to call me and tell me what he meant. Did he mean something else? No, listen to it carefully. He made it so clear. If you believe in that, that there is those people behind the wall, this is your business. I don't believe in that. Behind the wall that was built for our classical and middle ages of Islam. If you look at any book of tafsir, any book of history, the notion was the following. Ya'juj and Ma'juj are a bizarre, exotic tribe in the nether regions of the world that have been trapped by Dhul Qarnayn thousands of years ago and they're still trapped to this day. That Ya'juj and Ma'juj are a living tribe blocked to this day behind the wall that was built 4,000, 5,000 years ago. That wall miraculously is still there. People can see on the one side and on the other side you have these savages that 
Allah knows how they're eating, drinking, replicating, whatnot, and they're still there for eons and eons and eons. Dare I say, anybody who knows science and geography and modern civilization, you cannot believe that there is a tribe for 4,000 years trapped behind a wall. I mean, if you believe this, any... Yani, yani. Okay, but Yasser Qadi, I mean, do you believe uh, that Muhammad, he went to the seven galaxy in the top of a flying donkey? As long as you are a person who speak about science and you claim to be an engineer, at the same time you are a sheikh, and the prophet, you know, he was in his bedroom, and then the, the, the donkey came to his room and he knocked at the window, huh, huh? and then when the angel, he tried to put Muhammad in the top of the donkey, the donkey refused to receive Muhammad in the top of him. The, inge the sorry, the, 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 the Jibreel, he said to the donkey, aren't you ashamed of yourself? The donkey looked at Jibreel and says, what the heck, why? He said to him, don't you know who's this? The donkey he said, oh, oh, who is this? Jibreel, he said to him, this is a prophet Muhammad himself. And then the hadith says that the donkey was so ashamed of himself. Imagine yourself, Muslim, listen to me. Imagine you are the donkey. I don't know if you need to imagine that because already you are in that state. Believing those stories, you must be a donkey. So imagine you are the donkey who come to carry Muhammad and now you refuse to let the Prophet to sit on top of you. How embarrassing for you. And then the Prophet when he heard this conversation between the angel Zibril and the donkey, he felt so proud. The angel saying to the donkey, do you know who is he? I mean, he, by the way, Muslims, why the angel did not tell the donkey, hey, by the way, we are going to pick up Muhammad. I mean, to save him the embarrassment. And why this donkey don't want to take Muhammad? Is that because he stink or he's dirty, he did not take a shower? I mean, what's the point? I mean, he's a donkey anyway. I mean, don't you notice this story is so, so good? Beautiful, beautiful story. Uh, anyway, I'm sure that this donkey, you now he be feel, like he felt he is very honorable because he got the opportunity to make the prophet jump in the top of him, you know? This is a big, big opportunity. I mean, those those are kind of opportunity happen to you once, uh, 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 you know, uh, in lifetime, for any donkey in the world. Hmm. I don't know. I have to say that uh, Islam is so strong, and the Prophet was so strong. That's why the Prophet, he used to F all his wives in one night. Yet he could not have one baby. Obviously, he was, he was shooting blank. <laughs> Husband, did you, did you check your bullets? <laughs> the Prophet was shooting non-stop, brother, all his wives and then no babies. Why? I mean, what happened? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. And then the prophet with all his stories, which all of them proving to be true. Like, you know, first time when I saw this hadith about the donkey refusing the prophet to jump on him. I said here, there is some honesty in this story. Because why the Muslim, they would say, even donkey don't want to have Muhammad to get close to him. Why? You tell me. Listen, listen. Al-Burak was brought to the Prophet. See, in there, his name is was B-H-U something. Here is S-A-W. I mean, ah, sound like Sadhguru. The bent in the location when he is making a lecture with the blonde women in in Los Angeles, uh, he dressed different and he have a different perfume. When he is in India, he said differently and he dressed differently and he have a different makeup. But anyway, anyway, 
just forget about Sad Guru. Sad Guru is just another fraud like Muhammad. But Sad Guru is a smarter one, you know, like he says stupid things like love is not exist. And then he said that my wife, she loved me. <laughs> love never exists. Do your wife love you? Absolutely. What the heck? You just said love never exists. Do you love your wife? I love my wife. And then in different places he said love is not exist. It's not real. Anyway, anyway, just let it go. Uh, so the Burak was brought to the Prophet. Here you notice something very important, by the way, something very sensitive information. You will notice that the Burak is brought to the Prophet. Not the Prophet was brought to the Burak. I mean, do you see how strong the story? The Burak, which is the flying donkey, which have two wings in his ass, may Allah ask him, he is the one who was brought to the Prophet case sensitive. Why? Very simple, brother. Because the Prophet is more important than the Burak. The Burak is important, is the limousine of Allah. However, because the Prophet is more important, so the Burak came to the Prophet, not the Prophet came to the Burak. Take a point. This is point number one for Prophet Muhammad. So he was brought for Prophet Muhammad in the night of Isra. Burak only come at night. Take a note. Why? Because he is very shy and case sensitive. In fact, I heard some stories, I'm not sure. If this is the reason he is naked yeah this donkey is naked and he is so shy so he don't like to walk between people and people are looking at uh, his uh, <clears throat> you know he's don't wear no pant or anything I mean totally naked you know so he come at night only that's why nobody saw him okay so he come at the night of Isra and he was saddled look he's ready see they have a garage in the heaven of Allah you know, they clean the donkey, they settle the donkey, they comb his hair, they put eyeliner in the donkey, his tail is clean, everything perfect, perfect, yeah, yeah. And then, and he and the uh, uh, and rain uh, renamed, I don't know if I'm saying the word correctly, re uh, reined, uh, is that let me let me use Google, uh, peace be upon him, to uh, uh, how to say this word, excuse my English. And now Mimi Hijab, he said, don't speak with English. <laughs> Your prophet do not even know his name. Hold on. Uh, all right. Rain. Rain, the same as rain? How is that will work? I don't know. Anyway, so the donkey simply, uh, uh, like, uh, and then, but he, sh she'd, shied, he shied. What the heck, those words, I never heard of them before. He shied. Uh, he shied from him. Ah, oh, shied from him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the donkey, he don't want to like, ooh, you know, the donkey, he don't want to like the prophet to get close to him. And, you know, uh, he want to like uh, stay away. Hmm? So he he's shy. Like, you know, like he don't want to get close to Ahmad. Uh, and then so Jabri said to him, is it from Muhammad that you do this? Huh? Huh? By your Lord, there is no one more honorable than to your Lord than him. Brothers, those are true stories. It is documented. It is true. And there is witnesses. Jibreel and the donkey, two witnesses, is enough in the court. Not to forget to mention Prophet Muhammad himself is equal to 1,000 liar. So the Jibreel he was so upset from the donkey. Like, what are you doing, man? This is the most honorable. Hey, Jibri, by the way, as long as he is the most honorable, I mean, shouldn't Allah send him like a limousine or, or, I mean, you see, if this is about honor, you see, Jesus is very humble, so he used a donkey because he's humble. Muhammad is the most honorable. Going to visit Allah, and Allah sent him a donkey? Okay. So here we see that the donkey as a reaction, I, sh I, I wish the donkey at that time he have a YouTube. Man, that would be a nice video. Listen, this, the donkey, he started sweating heavily. Do you see what happened to the donkey after that? Do you see the, the, the size of the embarrassment? So imagine Ali Dawa, Ali Dawa is the donkey coming to pick up the Prophet. 
and he did what he did and then the angel Jibreel he screamed at him saying to him shame on you the donkey starts sweating his ass he starts dripping like water he's sweating because he's so terrified what I did what I did now they will report me to Allah and they will tell Allah that I did shine from Prophet Muhammad who was going to ride in the top of my back hmm. Fatima saying Quran explained in biology 1400 years ago that's deep so why Lili Dawa is saying scientific miracles is debunked Fatima can your husband call me Fatima so he can explain to us the scientific miracles of the biology in biology listen carefully brother 1400 years ago the scientific biology discovered in the Quran before all mankind. Like what, Fatima? Like the sperm coming from the backbone of the man. And women, they have a sperm coming from their ribs. Do you have a sperm, Fatima? Hmm? Hmm. If there is anyone from the Muslims who want to talk about it, I don't mind. Just text me. I will be happy to take you in Skype and I will talk to you. Oh, we have somebody who is a Muslim. Let us see. <laughs> I hope he will answer. Hello? Hello? Yes, I hear you. Go ahead. Are you going to run today too? Well, you are the same person. Each time I ask you, you give me an answer. You got your profit busted. And I'm done with you. Why are you running from a woman? Just be a man. And because you are a stupid. You you know what you insult me stupid you insult me half brain. Okay, isn't it you? Is isn't it your prophet who said you are half a brain? Is it me or or your prophet? My, my prophet didn't say anything. Okay, I'll, okay, I'll, I will put the I will put the hate in front of you as long as this is what you said, and then you read it and you tell me if he said that you are half a brain or not. Is that all right? I don't go. I don't follow hadith. I follow only the Quran. You cannot follow the Quran only. You see, you said you you said my prophet did not say that. And now you say you want to follow only the Quran. So how you asking me, how you say to me, my prophet did not say that. What your prophet say is not going to be in the Quran. Are you stupid or what? What your prophet said is his say. Listen, listen, you're stupid. That's why I say you are stupid. I say to you, your prophet said, you said to me, my prophet did not say. I say, let me show you the hadith. You say to me, I don't follow the hadith. But we are talking about what the prophet said, not what Allah said. So you are stupid again. Go ahead. What do you want to say? So you telling me I'm stupid? Did the prophet said I'm stupid? Yes. Did the prophet say that you insult me? You the expert, yes. you know? Yes. Otherwise, you know why? You never. You know why I never. I never insulted you back because my religion taught me man. Your prophet. Islam. Your prophet teach you to call me an infidel, <laughs> pagan, a sick, a pig. A, a liar, the worst of animals, the worst of a creatures, monkey. So don't tell me we don't insult the Christians. All your religion is based on insulting the Christians. And we can go to the Quran. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want you to show, I want you to read with me what your prophet said. Your prophet said that Muslim women, they have deficiency in their wisdom and their intelligence. Do you see the screen? So you want me to believe something that was written after his death, 200 years after his death? So, his so, death. so, so are you saying to me that you Muslims don't accept what the Muslim they wrote after Muhammad about him? Allah, Allah describes the Muslim, those Arabs, as some of them, the worst of creatures. Okay, so you just said, you just said we Muslim, we've been ordered to respect everybody. And now you are saying the Arab, and I am an Arab, we are the worst of the creatures. Allah says, you are asking me Muslim road, and I say, Allah says... So Allah, he can insult us, and you can repeat the insult, and you are racist, because now you are insulting, and now you are insulting me, I'm an Arab, just because I'm an Arab, you are saying I'm the worst of the creature, thank you very much. What is your, what is your nationality? You are from Afghanistan? 
I'm saying the Quran says, Allah says in the Quran that some of the Arabs are worse of disbelievers. Okay, asking but Quran okay, but, but why you don't want to tell me why you why you said you reject what your prophet said and you said to me things which is written after Muhammad that we don't accept, but everything you have is written <laughs> after Muhammad. Listen, is the Quran was was the Quran written before Muhammad or after Muhammad? Allah says. Was the, says, was the Quran written after Muhammad or before Muhammad? Allah says, was the Quran written before Muhammad or after Muhammad? During his time, the Quran was revealed during So why his time. you call the Quran the Quran of Uthman if this is during his time? It was his time. It was reviewed. So why you call it? What do you mean reviewed? No, because everybody have his own Quran. There's many Quran. Listen, Uthman, Uthman, he burned all the Quran, and you don't have a single Quran of them, including the Quran of Uthman. And even the one we have now, it is coming from a guy, his name is Hafiz. He exists 200 years after Muhammad. Is that true? Nothing like that. Don't please. If you don't even understand your Bible, how do you even understand the Quran? Well, uh, uh, this is a good point. Listen, guys. A Muslim woman, she is saying to me, if you don't understand your Bible, how you can understand the Quran? So why, so why you, so why you a stupid prophet? Allah asked him in the Quran, if you don't understand the Quran and your religion, go to Christian prince. Allah didn't say that. Allah, didn't Allah he said that, that in the Quran. He said in chapter 10, verse number 94, you stupid Muhammad, if you don't understand your religion, if you have a doubt about your belief, go and ask Christian prince. Read the verse for me. Go ahead. Okay, can I respond? Let me come. Let me. Give me the verse. I gave you the verse. Chapter 10. I forgot you are half a brain. Chapter 10, verse number 94. And I can open any uh, translation you want. What translation you like? We have shish kebab translation. We have hummus translation. We have uh, falafel translation. All of them are falafel anyway. So tell me which one you like. We'll put for you on the screen and people will die laughing. I'm searching. Chapter 10. Why you are searching? It's chapter 10, verse number 94. Let me go stop. Chapter 10, verse 94. 94 is the one before 95, and it is after the verse 93, which means 94 between 93 and 95. 96 is after 95, but 94 is before 96, and 95 and 94 is between 93 and 95. I hope I make it more clear for you. Still, you could not find it? I'll be with you. I mean, after all this interpretation and tafsir, 94 between 95 and 93, and after it, 96, still until now, you could not find it. Do you want to call a friend? I'm, I've seen it. Oh, you've seen it now? Okay, that's good. Okay, so if Allah says, was Allah talking to the... Uh, the, the Christians? No, he was talk to the, talking to the Hindu. He's talking to Muhammad. Yes. Yeah, he told Muhammad, if you have a doubt about your belief, which means Muhammad, you don't believe is a prophet, go and ask the Christian and the Jews. So how we are not the one who don't understand our book, yet your prophet is the one who doesn't understand what he's talking about. He been told by Allah, listen, Abitato, go to Christian prince. If you have any question, come to him. He will teach you. He will spank you. He will educate you. It's in your front of you, yet you are saying that we Christian, we don't understand our book, but it turned to be that Muhammad himself is the last one to know what he's doing. Why Allah want to send Muhammad to the Christian and the Jews so they can teach him who is he? Okay, let me respond, please. Respond, respond. That, that was the angel and the Torah, not the Bible. It, it said the people of the book, you idiot. The angel. The what angel? angel what angel? It's angel. It's angel, not angel. Angel is a is a is a is a is a malak. Listen, it says, "Ask the people of the book. Ask the people of the book. The people of the book. It's us. It is the human. It's not the book. It's not the book. Ask the Christians and the Jews." I'm saying, the Jews people, they've hidden. I don't have time for stupidity. Sorry, I cannot handle you.
Thank God I am single. Otherwise, I would commit suicide. Oh boy. Oof. I, you know, you Christian do not know your Bible. You do not know why you are calling me half a brain. Your prophet called your prophet. I don't believe in what they say about the prophet. He said so. What? So what Islam is about? They deny what the Quran say. They deny what the Tafsir say. They deny what the Hadith says. So what is left, brother? Islam is strong, but Hadith is daif. Quran is daif. Tafsir is daif. Muslim are daif. So who's strong? And they send me a woman. There's a billion Muslim men. They send me a female. And my mom, she called me, son, are you going to get married soon? Like, what the heck, mom? You don't know what's going on. Women these days are different. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I guess it is the ice cream they are eating these days. I don't know. But uh, not all women, for sure. I'm just joking. I mean, those are crazy. I'm, I'm unbelievable. And especially this woman. She keep calling me and she would call again. It's a curse. Do we have any Muslim? This idiot, he keeps saying to me, Christian Prince, are you black? My friend, why even you care if I'm black or a blonde or are you a racist? Are you black? Are you black? Are you black? Christian Prince, are you black? Christian Prince, are you black? Are you black, Christian Prince? Are you, do you have a diarrhea? Are you mental? People who ask about color are only the racist because they don't see you as a person, they see color only. If I'm black or Asian or white, what that would do to you, you donkey? We are all children of Adam and Eve. and God Almighty, he sent his only begotten son because he loves us all. He don't love the white alone or the black alone, or the Asian alone. So learn good manner when you speak to people. Don't ask them what is your color, donkey. Only racist, they see color. Only racist. And there's a lot of them. Anyway, do we have any brave Mohammedan would like to call us? <clears throat> Anyone? Every single stupid miracle in the Quran is defeated. Get my books and read and laugh. And soon actually I'm going to publish my Quran and Science second edition in Amazon so you can have it because people are asking for it for long any Mohammedan what a drama what a, what a what a collapse of this cult you see those people it's like God is great God is amazing sometimes you ask yourself well, okay why, why the Lord he allow those people to grow like, you know, they became famous and etc. It sounds like there is a moment where those famous ones, they will drop their poopoo over the devil. And the more they grow, the more the poopoo will become like a big, huge nuke. It turned to be, it's for the benefit of the good God. He let them grow. So when they grow, they demolish their own cult. Because many, they build their faith on what they say. Like, as if they thought that it was a slip of the tongue. I'll repeat it again, very carefully. The scientific miracles argument in the Quran got debunked. Yeah, I hope my tajweed was on point. So when I said this, a lot of um, 
Islamophobes were celebrating as if I was like, oh my gosh, like this video is going to be me apologizing. And no, listen, it got debunked. Now, let's give some context for some Muslims so they can understand. For example, and I'll tell you where this comes from. And you know why many people in the Duat, many Duat, YouTubers, my colleagues, that, like brothers that I work with, didn't do a video. Why did you say that? Because they know it as well. In what sense? Brothers and sisters. But now, and sister, and now he will try to explain his people. What the Mohammedan they do when they get bigger, and this is for our benefit, and this is why we use their videos. They, they become our comedy. You know, I mean, I can't find a better comedy, honestly. Like, I laugh at Muhammad, I laugh at the Hadith, I laugh at the Quran, but those, they are like the Christmas light. We, 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 you know, they are the comedy, the best comedy ever. Only stupid one will accept for a second anything to do with science and his belief. You see, we Christians, if somebody will start telling me about scientific miracle of, in the Bible, I will laugh at him. What the Bible have to do with science? Well, what is that? What do you mean science? Oh, in the book of Job, it says the earth is hanged on nothing. This is my friend, this is not science. This is science, it's something else. If it agree with science or not, that is not a reason for us to believe in the Bible. What is? What if it is, does not agree with the science? As an example, Jesus is born of a virgin. That it does not agree with the science. But you believe in it, don't you? So only foolish people, they go in that direction. And because Islam is dead, so Muslim, they try to revive the dead. So they start kissing in the mouth. They start pumping gas in the anus. They start, the, the Islam is like the, 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 that guy's story. I don't know if I told you. There's a scholar, this is a story written in their books. Uh, there's a guy, he died. And you know, Muslims, when somebody died, they, uh, they take off his clothes and they wash him. And they put a piece of cotton in his anus. And that because they don't want the 99 dragons to go inside his anus when he go in the, in the, in the grave. So one of the Muslims uh, scholars, he said, this man is not dead. The other Muslim, they says, how do you know? He's not moving. He's like that for a long time, in the, on, like on the bed, he's not moving. He's naked. So he said, for if you put your finger in his anus, it is warm. Which means this guy behind them, without, without training them, when he went alone with this man, he put his finger in his anus. Otherwise, how he knew? And then every single one attending the funeral start placing his finger in the anus of the dead man. Imagine the whole funeral. All the men in the funeral, they want to check really if what he is saying is true. If the man is dead and how we know, we place our finger in the anus. That is Islam. Islam is a dead God, dead Muhammad. And the Muslim now, they are trying an experiment, putting their finger in the anus to say to us, Islam is still warm, it is not dead. But they forgot at the end of the day, they just pushed their finger in the anus. Warm or not, it is an anus. And you cannot fix it. You cannot make it work. And those videos is nothing but a chain of madness and drama and Islam is collapsing. Wallahi, wallahi, this person is a disaster that has... has a, a, a... Shut up. Don't talk about Sheikh Yasser Qadi like that. I mean, how in the world do you say such a thing? And what happened to your hair? Camel urine too much acid, you lose it. Should be shut down. His channel should be shut down. Yasser Qadi 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 should be shut down. I like it. Yasser Qadi should be shut down. His channel should be shut down. He should never be allowed to open his mouth about Islam. Wallahi. 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 This person is a disaster that has, has uh, engulfed this ummah.
When you do a deep dive is when things get very, very awkward and difficult. No. No. If you want misguidance, if you want misguidance, listen to Yasser Qadi. The preservation of the Ahruf, is it one, is it three, is it seven? Yasser Al-Qadi, I accuse you. You are worse than the layman people. You failed. You failed. This is not a joke, brothers and sisters. The issue of Ahruf and Qiraat caused confusion to somebody whom the Prophet said, if you want to listen to the Quran directly, listen to Ubay. Live. We don't care. The most advanced <laughs> of our scholars, they're not quite fully certain how to solve all of the unanswered yeah. questions in there. Yes, sir, Qadi, when you see him uh, on a video, click X. Traditional understandings of Ahruf and Qiraat cannot answer some of these pressing questions that are now being poked. When you hear him, close your ears. Lest you want to be uh, exposed to fitna. The standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. This quote unquote renowned scholar, he's a da'i. He does not qualify to be a scholar. I would advise Dr. Yasser Qadi to stop indulging in this because this is not his field. He's not an authority to, to, to say. If I were to give you a blank mushaf, yeah, and uh, and tell you to write what is munazzal verbatim from Allah into that mushaf with no human interference, would you write something which corresponds? It's with not an easy answer. It's not an easy yes or no. That the I Quran think this should be an easy yes or no, though. Yes, I, I, I have to. Okay. What would you write? Uh, 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 let's not. Let, let's. You, you're pushing me. I'm telling it to you flat out. You may not listen to anything that Yasser Qadi has to offer. Zero. Nada. Nothing. And my argument is very straightforward. So what if a lot of people said something, it doesn't make it right. The fact that 99% of your teachers say something doesn't mean it is the, the correct truth. His criticism applies to the entire Islamic tradition. Of course, anything that Yasser Qadi says at this point is probably wrong. We are at a point with Yasser Qadi where if he says the sky is blue, I have to double check three, four times. It seems like Yasser Qali's lying. That's just the reality. Yasser Qali seems to be lying. There has never been two copies of the Quran that are different even in one letter or one word. Is that, is that true? It's not true. If you were to compare two printed Qurans, you're going to see differences between them. And the <laughs> by the way, this video is made by Hatun. So if you want the video, it's here. This is not my made. I'm not going to collect a bunch of kids here, but anyway, it's just for fun. Second video, he's clear about what, about the reality and he affirms the reality. So those are two different things. I wish and pray that Allah Azza wa Jal will guide him. Allah guide him, Ya Rabbi guide him. And if Allah, if Allah doesn't have it in his decree to guide him, to so that we don't have to hear him rant about any Islamic subject matter. From, from, from the accused Prophet Sallam of having ill, intentions with Zainab bin Jahash to now claiming that shirk is not shirk. What is left for this guy? Quran has, uh, the, the narrative of the Quran has holes in it. The standard narrative, what is left for this person? The standard narrative does not answer some very pressing questions. The standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. I'm telling you, if you continue to listen to him very soon, there will be no more foundations of Islam. They're being... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. If you continue listening to him few more, there's no more foundation left for Islam. Did I say that? It's not me. Who said that? The Muhammadan. And yet they claim that Islam is strong. ...has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. I'm telling you, if you continue to listen to him very soon, there will be no more foundations of Islam. They're being... They're being destroyed in front of you one after the other. I believe that he finds the topic of the Qiraat to be uh, problematic for like the, the layman audience. And therefore, he simply <laughs> lies. That's what I believe. Well, what's wrong with you? You used to be a good person before. That's Allah who guides whom he will. He guide whom he will. Oh boy. Look, look. Did, did you see the, the last edit when he said, Allah he guide who he will and misguide who he will. Did you see the wisdom? They just admitted at the last moment clip that Allah is shaitan, Satan. Allah, he guide who he will 
and misguide who he will. So why you are angry from the guy? If he is misguided, that means it's Allah. And if he is guided, it's Allah. People, do you understand the stupidity of this cult? He just said, Allah is the one who misguides and Allah is the one who guides. So why are you angry from him? Right. That's what I believe. Well, what's wrong with you? You used to be a good person before, but it's Allah who guides whom he will and misguide whom he will. See? That is Islam. They are worshipping Satan and Satan is their God, their sermon, their idol, their black stone, Muhammad is their God. Allah is just a name, you know, Muhammad he used as a sex toy so he can place his finger in every Muslim anus. That is the truth. That is the truth. And you cannot even find one Muslim. Muslims are not attacking him. Every Muslim attacked the other Muslim. Why? Because this is Islam. Who is the one who killed the Caliphate Uthman? Muslims. Omar. Muslims. All of them. All of them. Who killed them? Oh, what? Muslims. Who killed the family of Muhammad? Muslims. Who made the daughter of Muhammad lose her baby? Oh, Omar. Who is the one who burned her house? Omar. Who is the one who caused her death? Omar. Who is the one who took an army to kill Ali and his family, Aisha? She took 10,000 men, army, to kill Ali. What a filthy religion. A bunch of criminals, the companion of Muhammad. This is Aisha, the one who says she was a child when she married Muhammad. Now she is a beast. Muhammad, he died. And Muhammad, he made her in a certain position because of her father. So now she is abusing her, her, her position after Muhammad's death, her and her family, and she start killing everyone who oppose her or oppose her father, including Ali. Is it true that the moon is split? Actually, I believe the moon is split, you know, uh, today actually is a super moon. I want to go and show you. I will take a picture. There is a crack and the, the American, as I, I, I have a clear evidence that they use a crazy glue to glue the moon together. I mean, the Muslim, by the way, when they say those stuff, we laugh. Why? Because even in that chapter, it doesn't say, it doesn't say anything. It says that there is a moon and that moon is split. It doesn't say who did it. It didn't say when, when it happened. It didn't say what happened. Always says the judgment day is night and the moon is split, which means it's a false prophecy because Muhammad, he predict that this is a sign from God and Allah told him that this is the sign of the judgment day started. So regardless if this is happening or not, this is again a proven Muhammad to be a fraud because did the judgment day really is near so soon? Because this is the start of the judgment day. Otherwise, why Allah, he split the moon? Same time, he said, when they see a miracle, they turn aside away and they say, this is a magic. Who is the one who saw the miracle? You see, if the moon is split and Muhammad, his existence was 600 years after Jesus, the moon should have split around the world. At least the, the areas where the, the, there's night. Correct? Which means all the territory where the Roman are located, they can see the same moon in the same and the in Persia and even Pakistan and even in part of India. So they can see how the moon is split, but there's no historian ever reports such a thing. The stupid Muhammad, he is talking about eclipse and he claimed this is a miracle from his God because they keep asking for a miracle. Same time. If you search in the Quran, you will find in the chapter 13 as an example, still the Arab, they say to Muhammad, we wish you have only one sign, just one sign. If the moon miracle happened, 
So how come there is verses coming after, long after saying, Allah saying himself, he did not give any miracle? Chapter 17, verse number 59 as an example. Al-Isra. Just to show you the stupidity of this Quran. The same chapter is about supposedly Muhammad going to the moon or to the sky, right? And this is goes in verse number one. Verse number one saying, Praise be to Allah, the one who took his slave to the heaven. Okay, wonderful. Then how in the world you say you're stupid? Few verses after, 59 verses in the same chapter saying, you never did a miracle to Muhammad. Are you with me? Imagine I'm writing a book, and then in the first page I say, guys, today, God, he took me to the seven heaven. What an amazing miracle. And then in page number 59 say, my God told me he refrained from giving me any miracle. So how you do say in the beginning, in the first line, that you did a miracle by taking me in the top of a flying donkey, and the donkey, he, you know, he was shied away from me, and then the, the, the Jibreel, he schooled him, he shouted at him, and says, shame on you. Don't you know that this is a prophet Muhammad who is the most honorable person in the world? You know, when the donkey, he don't want to, you know, uh, ride him. And then you say that Allah, he refrained from sending miracles because people don't believe it anyway. Which means even the Quran itself is not a miracle. Because if Allah is saying, He refrained from sending miracles, and this is a verse in the Quran, that means the Quran itself cannot be considered as a miracle. Because the Quran says, Allah, He refrained from what? From giving miracle. So imagine I am making miracle now, and I say to you, I refrain from making miracle. If the Quran is a miracle, well, Allah is saying a miracle right now. So how he say He refrained from miracle? Are you with me? Anyone have difficulty to understand what I'm saying? The Muslim, they say, another side, they say the Quran itself is a miracle, which is stupid. I mean, the one who knows Arabic, he will see how silly it is. If the Quran is a miracle, so how Allah, he say, he refrained from giving miracle? Isn't it the Quran itself is a miracle? This is why we find Islam is very laughable and we see there's a huge collapse between the Muslims and all this drama. Name for me one person the Muslim don't make a video against him. One Muslim, Muslim don't accuse him and attack him. Why? Because simply Islam is a scam. They are not in agreement in the scam. Everybody run his own business, a scam business. Mimi Hijab, he have whole pages in Facebook on Twitter just to attack Muslims. And Muslims, they have a lot of pages to attack Yasar Qadi, Mimi, Susu, Dudu, Fufu, you, you name it. And you will notice that because those Muslims are so decent, extremely decent, brother, they even fabricate lies against each other to make each other look bad. Can you believe it? And this is one of the tactics of Muhammad Hijab. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome all viewers. Today we're going to be taking a look at this video that Muhammad Hijab posted entitled, Sajid Backstabs Again, Muhammad Hijab Responds. Now this video was not posted to Muhammad Hijab's main YouTube channel, but rather it was posted on a YouTube channel called SP Files which has 161 videos and it says that this channel will unveil the extremism of Salafi publications and its affiliates. So here we have an entire channel 
filled with videos from both Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa where they are refuting Muslims. They are making videos against other Muslims. In fact, that is the entire purpose of this channel. But before moving on, let's talk a little bit about Salafi publications. For those of you who aren't familiar with it. So all the videos here, they are attacking each other and speaking about how they do bully. They bully each other in the city of Medina, city of Mecca. They once were. But that brings me to Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa. Now that we know a bit of the history of S-Pubs, if we analyze these two individuals, then we'll find that the tactics that they use are ironically similar to the tactics that they criticize S-Pubs for. We mentioned that S-Pubs became popular initially due to our lack of scholarship in the West. So they were presented as knowledgeable figures who should be giving da'wah. And once they rose to prominence, they maintained that power, in many cases, through peer pressure and bullying. Now, if we look at Muhammad Hijab, how did he rise to prominence? He did so by presenting himself as an intellectual who should be giving da'wah in the West. And just as we said Salafi publications had some good with them, there's no doubt that Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa both have some good with them. Muhammad Hijab is a skilled debater. This is what the Muslims do. They, they, in the beginning, they praise you and then they give you a screwdriver after a second. You just say they are bully. So what do you mean they are good on them? So this is what the Muslims do to each other. Mimi Hijab, he says the same. He screw this guy, he humiliate this guy, he shower him with dirt and poo poo, and then he say, but you know, there's some good thing about him, by the way. <laughs> uh, there's an idiot in the chat, he said the following. Uh, what is the idiot? Hold on. I, I will not block you, by the way, you are welcome. I don't know what this name is, it sounds like a train. Islam might be that have thing that is incorrect, but CP is a pretty bad Christian teacher. He is not born again yet. He has not fully forgiven, truly forgiven. <laughs> Shall I forgive Shaitan, brother? How I can be born again, again, according to you? By hugging the liars? You must be a good man. You know, this is an example of the scumbags. They come here. They never fought for the truth. They never risked their life. They never made one Muslims leave Islam and see the truth. And then they come here to school you and you are bad. My friend, I am honored to be the one you describe me this way. If that would make thousands and thousands of people come to Christ. You are just a scumbag yourself. And you are jealous because you are sitting like a rat you never do any work and you are here coming to criticize someone you are no match to because you are so small if you are good go and open your channel and make videos and bring people to the true faith but you are just a stabber while I'm here trying to save the Muslims from the garbage of Muhammad, you are coming here to attack me. Who care? I love. I will add you to the Muslims. I want to I wanna let you know that there is no way a Christian person, he will not like what I do. Unless he is satanic. Why? Isn't it Jesus? He called even the Jews serpent. Is that true, Christians? Did the Messiah call the Jews who worship the true God? Did he call them serpent? Did the Messiah call them evil doers? Did he call them hypocrite? Did he call them liars? Did he say that you are, if you are like your father Abraham, which means he denied the relationship to Abraham, you do the work of your father? Did he call them evil generation? So those false Christians, they try to make you think that the Christianity is about giving hugs and kisses, which is far away from the truth. Those are the hypocrite. Those are the one who accept homosexuality and they call themselves Christians. You cannot accept homosexuality and you are a Christian. You cannot accept any sin and you are a Christian. You can't ex even accept somebody is a drunk and you are a Christian. Drunk, just a drunk. 
they try to make a Christianity look something different. They are the same as the hypocrite Mohammedans. They want to make Jesus as somebody is a hippie. He was in the street, he have a ring in his ear, he have a ring in his nose, and he have a red dot in his head, and he was walking and next to him there is sad guru. They want to make Jesus as a yoga teacher and sit down and relax. That is far away from Christianity. Those are false evil people. They will attack you because you are not in agreement with their garbage. Pornocators, liars, cheaters, drunken, homosexual, all, all, I mean, first Corinthians, go and open it and you will see. They don't go to heaven. But they don't want to read those in the church because they are hypocrite. This is how you know if a church is a church. Ask them cert certain questions. Ask them, what do you think about Islam? If they start saying, we have the same God and they are from Abraham. The second the priest, he said that to you, he is the priest of the devil. Get out. Ask them second question about homosexuality. If they say God love everybody and he you know, blah, 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 blah. He avoid giving you the, the answer. This is not a church of God. Leave it immediately. The Bible says anyone who bring us other than this is scriptures, let him be cursed. Do we agree? Anyone who bring us other than this is scriptures, let him be cursed. So we follow no man. We follow the scriptures, which is God. And if one day I say Satan to you, something to you, is not what the scriptures say, never listen to me. Never take it. Those false people, they are trying to destroy your children. And the more the world become politically correct because everybody is afraid they will cancel you oh you cannot receive donation oh YouTube will delete your channel oh etc a Christian person he will fear nobody unless he is doing a business they cancel me do you see I have only a hundred thousand subscribers do you know why because I keep losing my channels I should have millions by now. Many millions. Because we say the truth, they fight us. They gather together, they gang against you. They flag your books, they flag your videos, they flag anything trying to cancel you just because you say the truth and yet they claim that they are people of democracy and they are people who support the freedom of speech and the second you say the truth they accuse you of hatred but we don't we never teach hatred here never look at the stupid european the stupid European, they made a council, a department to fight Islamophobia. But who is the one who have a phobia? It's the Muslims. They have phobia from pork. They have phobia from the atheists. They have a phobia from the homosexual. They have a phobia from the, from the cross. They have a phobia from the church, phobia from the Bible, phobia from the music, phobia from anything. They kill people for a cartoon. They even have a fatwa, a holy command to kill Mickey Mouse, the cartoon. And then the stupid European Union, Union, they made a department designated to fight Islamophobia. And look, Europe is burning. And I'm laughing. I'm laughing at them. I'm not, I'm not sad for them. No. 
let, let, let them eat from their seed. This is their seed. It's time for harvest. We warn them non-stop every day. And then what they do? They call your names. They call you Islamophobic. They say you are a hating person. You are teaching hate. But we never did so. We are just saying the truth. And those are stupid, they keep bringing more people who hate them to their land. And who is going to stop them now in France? There are millions. The only way is civil war. This is how stupid those French people. Paris is not Paris no more. France is not a France no more. Germany is not Germany no more. Go and see what they have. They do not know what they did to themselves because they did not listen. As the Chinese, they said, he left as a donkey, never come back as a horse. You cannot make a donkey a horse. Can you? And most of European today is in the stage of donkeys. And now if they are saying to me, they just walk up, they're too late. How you want to fix it? Make me the president of France. I will fix it in 24 hours. Very simple. Anyone will be caught burning a property of somebody else. Doesn't matter. He's a Christian, Hindu, Jews, anyone. Anyone will use violence in his protest, will be stripped from his citizenship, will be kicked out of the country, will be sent back where he is coming from. You will see every single one of them will behave, will never do that again. And make it a law for everybody. It doesn't matter what his religion. He's a Christian, he burned a car, kick him out of the country. He's a Hindu, kick him. He is a Muslim, kick him. You cannot build a country when you have a potato in the office. Countries destroyed because of leaders. Leaders, when you have a weak leader, your nation at risk. And this is the truth. Look at the stupid Israeli. Today they launch an attack on Jenin. 2,000 soldiers to kill what? Seven terrorists. But in this town, there is 70,000 terrorists. So what? You did nothing. Nothing. You cannot accomplish victory with a scumbag prime minister like Netanyahu. The Jews will never have flourish life unless they have a king. His name is David. The European colonized every day. Now it is their turn. Some people saying, you can say whatever you want, my friend, but when European colonized, they did not do what those people are doing. And I will give you an example. The first time we Arab, we have a printer or a newspaper or a book printed. It was because of European. The first time we have a train and electricity was because the colonized European. The first time we have a real school, a real education, not a stupid Quran recitation, it was because the European. So you can say whatever you want, but the European, they brought a lot of advance. When the Ottoman, they occupied the Middle East, the Middle East became in the cave time. When the French, and the other countries, they occupy the Middle East. 
they jump like a hundred year from behind. Who is the one who brought, brought the printer and electricity and trains? And how, until now, Middle East, and they cannot build hospital like the French they build in the Middle East. Until now, the Egyptian, they are using hospital built by the UK. If you don't believe me, go check it out. Until now, their hospital is still working, functioning in India, everywhere. Until now, the bridge they are using is made by European. We cannot make a bridge like the one they do now in 2023. Those people, my friend, even if they came for a reason of money or evil, still they did a lot of good. But when the other side come to Europe, what they give, what they do, look, do they appreciate? You come as a homeless, you come as a refugee, they give you housing, they give you food, they give you shelter, they give you free school for your kids, they give you free insurance, health insurance, and then you burn their country. Do you see the difference? This is the truth. I saw a video of a three, I don't know, like somebody from UK, he made a comment, and the three people, one of them is Indian, the other one I don't know from where. However, supposedly all of them, they are immigrant. And they start bashing the UK. And I made a comment there. I wish I can I find you the video. I find it very funny. I mean, they are saying that the UK did nothing to India. Yet they are, they are wearing their clothing. They are using their language. <laughs> and until now, they are using their structures. And they claim that the UK did nothing good to India. The Indian, the Hindu, they used to burn women alive when the husband died. If you don't believe me, search it in Prophet Google. They used to burn women alive as if she is a chicken barbecue just because the husband, he died. They put all the stuff belong to the husband in the fire, including the wife. So here we share the truth. When you do ugly, we say you are doing ugly. When you do good, we say you did good. As you see, a second ago, I was speaking against European. A second after, I'm speaking for the European. Why? Because I'm just saying the truth. When they, when they do good, I say they did good. When they do bad, I say they did bad. If you go in the TV, you will see that they say that the Israeli are occupying Palestine, but it's the opposite. It is those Arab occupying Israel. This is the truth. Even the Quran says so. Imagine if the one who have the army of Israel is the Muslims, what they will do to the Jews. Imagine if the one who they are Palestinian is the Jews now, the situation change. And the Jews and, the, and Hamas are the government. And they are the massive army. What will happen to the Jews? Do you know the answer? Don't you? They will slaughter every single Jew in one day. This is the truth. My friend, I don't forgive you because you did nothing against me. All what you did is against God. Because if you are a decent man, you will not attack somebody saying the truth, trying to save Muslims from their faith, from Muhammad. You do not know me, you idiot. Forgive you for what? I don't need to forgive you. Who, who cares? You can say whatever you want about me. Do I even I care? You are just an idiot. Forgive what? You're a dummy. Did somebody beat me? Did somebody kill me? I don't. I do not need to forgive anyone. Even the one who insult me, he did not insult me. He's insulting himself. And this is why they don't dare to debate me. They don't dare to refute me. And they don't even dare to say, I'm, I'm going to do it. Somebody's saying he is a Muslim. Let us see.
We are calling this guy to see if he would answer. Anyway, maybe he's not answering. But as you see, the second you say the truth, people go against you. Just be a hypocrite and be perfectly correct. And then everybody will say to you, God bless you. You are a wonderful man. Yeah? Then YouTube will allow me to receive donation. They will allow me to have advertising. I will be a person whose video appear everywhere. I will have my millions of subscribers. I will not lose my channels. Everything will be fine. Don't say the truth. Say what you want about politics, but don't say anything bad about Muhammad. My friend, you just said, don't say anything bad about Muhammad. That means you just say that Muhammad is bad. You see, when I say those people, they have a lack of intellect and low IQ, I'm not insulting. Because when you say to me, listen, don't say anything bad about Muhammad, that means you admit it and you agree that your prophet is bad. Because how I can say something bad about Muhammad unless he is bad? What about you call me Muhammad Riz, Rising? I don't know what your name means. Are you saying to me Muhammad is coming from his grave? That doesn't match, my friend. He's dead. The only one he is risen and he is above is the Messiah. Change your name. It doesn't fit Muhammad. Same time, I'm not the one who said your prophet is bad. He said that. Isn't it him who went to his own son, wife, and he flirted with the wife when the husband was not there? And he claimed that Allah is the one who made him do that? And then he made the verse in the Quran saying, Allah told him why you are lying and hide that you want the women in your bed. This is not my words, it's in the Quran. Huh? It's your Quran saying Muhammad is bad. Prove me wrong. Would you? When your prophet, he ordered Muslim women to give their boobs to an adult man. Is he making fun of you or of himself, of his God? He's making fun of who? He's making fun of somebody. What kind of a prophet he ordered your mother to give her boobs to the neighbor? And yet you Muslim, you claim to be conservative. Can I visit you? Can I visit you, my friend, and practice the breast feeding for adult? And then the second we ask them a question about it, they try to smear you. Look how Christian prince he spoke. Look, but the Muslim themselves, they make fun of Islam and they make fun of Muhammad. Look, this is Mimi Hijab going around, quoting his prophet, making fun of Muslims who believe it. Okay, okay. Can I suck your wife's tit? Who said that? Muhammad Hijab. Muhammad Hijab making fun of his prophet. Because this is, was in the Quran. It is a verse in the Quran that a Muslim woman, she should give her boobs to a stranger. Allah, he sent 10 times breast feeding for adult verses. That is a miracle. That is a scientific miracle. It turned to be that if your wife, she gave me her breast 10 times, scientifically is different from 9 times. Who is a Muslim can tell me what the difference between 10 times and 9 times? What if I did 9 times and the half? Hmm? Why ten time one? And then they say to you, Allah abrogated that by five times. What happened? So scientifically it was nine times, and then Allah He adds some drop of some medicine to it and He made it five times. Why Allah He changed his mind between ten and five? Ten time breastfeeding, now five time breastfeeding. But where we can find the five time and the ten time in the Quran? Here we go. The Muslim, he don't, could not answer me. He called me evil. He was the drama. Can he answer me? No. You're evil. May Allah kill you. May Allah make a train go over you. Train is coming to you. Okay. 
You remind me of your prophet. He kept praying to Allah and nothing happened. This is from God. And where is the verses? Where is the verses came down in the Quran? Where we can find them? What the Muslim they say? The goat ate it. What Christian say? Christian prince say? Well, I don't believe the story of the goat. Maybe the goat ate the Quran, yes. But there is no way that the goat ate your memory, Muslims. So let us say the goat ate the Quran. Did the goat eat your memory? Don't you Muslim, you say we memorize the Quran by heart? Huh? How many times we heard them saying that they memorize the Quran by heart? And then we ask them, all right, as long as you memorize the Quran by heart, who can recite for us the chapters of the breastfeeding for adults? They say to you, the goat ate it. Okay, my friend, the goat ate the paper. He did not eat your memory. Are you sure this is, was a goat, not a Trojan horse? Where you can email me, people, they can uh, send me email in Patreon, not in Skype. If you send me in Skype, I will not look. Any Mohammedan? This is how the Quran preserved. And this is in your book. And Aisha, she ordered her, her sisters and her nieces to give their boobs to anyone want to attend to her. It's in the front of you. Am I making things up? Or this is what happened? Hello? Hello? Don't, don't, don't call me again, stupid. I mean, this is an idiot woman. What a bug. Running away from you, you are an idiot. The same woman again. Lord have mercy. Any brave Mohammedan? And now if I ask her about suckle me, the Muslim, they will say, see, he is speaking to Muslim women about suckling her boobs. Is that from God? Ten time breastfeeding for adult? Adult, a strange adult, not like, I mean, listen, guys, even if it's your mother, I mean, who of you is a man will accept to sit in his mother's lap and suckle her breast for what? Muhammad was making fun of this woman and he claimed, because now everybody's talking about it, he claimed that Allah gave him those uh, order from Allah. Anyway, obviously we are out of uh, customers and nobody is calling. So I hope today we have a good time with the strength of Islam. Don't forget to download the video and share it with your friends. And uh, uh, maybe next time we go live, we will find some Muslim who have some intellect. Because all of them, they have intellect. Intellect, intelligence. And this is why they believe there is God who make their penis endless, which is a uh, true and their penis will never go limp or wimp and uh, they will have unlimited supply of laser shooting not even semen hey muslim do you know that in heaven muslim when they have orgasm they don't have semen so what what you shoot what i mean what's wrong with this muhammad so now you are having sex and now you are having orgasm so what will come from your private part Pepsi Cola?
I mean, this guy, the more you read about him and what he's saying, the more you, you, like, you, you notice how crazy he is. Even your gun in heaven is shooting blank. Once, you know, I was saying, uh, a Muslim, he says, how much you know about Islam? I said, hey, you know, ask me anything you want. And then I made a challenge. I said, okay, give me three words in the chat and I will make, I will give you a story about it from Islam with the reference. So the guy, he decided to make it impossible. So he said, okay, tell me a hadith about microwave. And how in the world you will find a hadith about microwave? I mean, microwave doesn't exist in time of Muhammad. And the guy, he said microwave because he thought there is no way Christian Prince, he can get something about microwave. I have a hate about microwave. Let me show it to you. The fastest microwave ever is the Islamic microwave. If a Muslim man, he wish to have a baby in the heaven, he will be pregnant. And he will deliver it in less than 15 minutes. Have you ever heard of a faster than this microwave? The man, he will deliver the baby himself? From where? The guy was astonished, like, you know, supposedly he made it impossible, like, you know, Microwave, like how you can find me a hadith about microwave. Are you joking? The believer, listen to this, listen to this. Abu Sa'd al Khudari narrated that the Messenger of Allah, S A W, said, The believer, when he desires a child in paradise, he shall be carried in pregnancy. The Muslim, he will carry it. And he born complete in his aging as one hour as he desired. By the way, translation here of an hour is not correct because in the time of Muhammad, the word hour was used to like a time of between 10 minutes to 15 minutes. This is what hour mean. Now the word sa means 60 minutes. But in the time of Muhammad, there is no such a use. So in 15 to 10 minutes, you can be delivering a child and you are a man. From where? From your nose maybe. This is why the Muhammadan, they say to you, don't read for me the hadith. I don't want to see a hadith. The guy who called me yesterday, he said, don't answer me from the Quran. They are ashamed. They are ashamed of what their prophet said and the stupidity. Yeah, I agree. This is a miraculous thing. You know, yeah, like uh, there's a guy from Hamas, uh, the guy he is in jail for three years, and then they told him uh, that your wife, she is carrying a child. His wife, what? She is carrying a child. She have a child, but how she can, how she can have a child, but they never have sex for three years. According to the Islamic interpretation of the Quran and Prophet Muhammad, a Muslim woman, depend in the sect, they can carry a child from the husband even seven to ten to unlimited years after the husband even die or he divorce. Can you believe it? If I search right now for a fatwa, what do I mean? Like a holy opinion. What is the maximum time a woman she can have a child after her husband pass away or divorce or how many years, how many months? I will use Google Translation in the front of your eyes. Read with me. What is the longest period a woman uh, stay while she is a pregnant? A pregnant. The answer, this is the question, and here is the answer. Thanks to Allah, firstly, when a Muslim, he say, firstly, the popo is coming. 
Firstly, secondly, thirdly, fourthly, fifthly, seventhly, eighthly, etc. Read and die laughing. According to Malik and Az Zuhri, six years. According to Imam Malik, five years. According to Al Shafi Al Hanbali, four years. Four years. You divorce your wife four years ago. She will call you. She will say, "Honey, come to the hospital to pay for the bill." What bill? For your son. What my son? I divorced you four years ago. This is your son. Four years, five years, six years. Are we done? No, seven years. It's an auction. Seven years. I mean, imagine after seven years, still the woman, she might have a baby from you. Seven years after you left her. This is Islam. And they say to you, scientific miracles. And then look, they reach, it's an auction. And there is no limit to maximum brilliancy. And this is the view of etc., etc., etc. No limit. Can you believe it? No limit. Your wife, she called you after 80 years. And she said to you, I had a son from you. My belly is full. Can you give a link and also video shake? I don't know. What do you mean? What do you mean? Video shake. The one I was showing the screen. The one I was showing the screen is from Harun. Uh, sorry, Hatun. 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 This is not my video. I don't have time. To, I don't make videos like, you know, uh, I just go live. I don't even prepare for things, as you know. Uh, the video here. This is Hatun. Hatun Tash. Our gift to Yasar Arkadi, horrors in the narrative, anniversary. <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> That's a good one. All right. I would like to see you debate Daniel. My friend, I invite them all. I made a challenge for this guy a long time ago, but he will not there. You see, this is why we laugh at them. You will notice they don't, they don't have a problem to come to David Wood, right? Or I'll say Prophet. But they are very much intimidated, all of them, to get close to me. If they say they cannot call me, I will call them in their channel. Give me your Skype. You can go live in your channel. I will go live in my channel and I will call. They don't dare. They are potatoes because they knew that will be the end of their career if they speak to me. That's why when I call Mimi Hijab, who challenged to debate me, when I call him, he hang up on me in seven minutes, more than seven times. And that's it. No debate happened. Did you say that? Hang up on him. Did you say that? Hang up on him. I was scared to debate you when I was a Muslim. You should not be scared to debate me because if you are seeking the truth, I mean, what will happen? Either you find the truth uh, uh, or you find me uh, lying to you. You should not be fearing anything. My friend, I am, I welcome anyone. As you see, anyone can call me. I don't choose people who want to debate me and I don't need to schedule a debate. If people are serious about debating me and they are capable, the question is why they don't do it. You know, how many Muslims they knew? A lot of Muslims leave Islam after calling me. So shouldn't those Muslims call so they can get this guy busted? Right? Isn't this their duty? How come they want to debate Apostate Prophet? How many times Lili Da'wah and Mimi Hijab, they spoke to Apostate Prophet? How many times even they ambush him? Ambush me! <laughs> How come they don't get close to me? I want to know. Shabir Ali, he debated every one of them. ABN TV, you know, they supposed to schedule a debate between me and him. 
I told those people in ABN TV, don't tell them this is a Christian prince. But those people, they are in. Yeah, I mean, Christians, yeah, they told him. The guy, after they told him, he went to Amazon and he bought my book. All right? And right away, he sent an email to ABN TV saying, uh, he apologized from debating me. Why? He noticed that he is no match. Very simple. If it is apostate prophet, he will be there. If it is David Wood, he will be there. If it's a Christian prince, he sent an email saying, well, you know what? I am doing my PhD. And since then, he is doing PhD. Since then, his PhD never finished. Yeah, I just came to ask the million dollar question, uh, Shabir, when will you, uh, will you ever debate Christian Prince? Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I uh, for those of you who don't know Christian Prince, uh, he is uh, a, a personality who has been uh, operating some sort of an internet radio broadcast as far as I can remember. Uh, he contacted me a long time ago. I never, I never contacted him, ever, never, 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 never. Never. I don't contact Muslims. It was ABN contacted him and contacted me. I never contacted him. He knew that. He's lying. Asking if I would debate him, and I said yes. Uh, uh, and and then uh, eventually I bought his book. Uh, and, um, mm, mm, and, mm, mm, mm. and then after he bought my book, he noticed that he is no match for this guy. I mean, what he have in his book is a disaster. What if he asked me a question from the book? You know, you notice that after he bought my book and then he searched my name, he decided to apologize. He never apologized from any except me. The second they knew that you speak Arabic, the second they noticed that you have a very good knowledge in the topic, the second they knew that this guy had never been defeated in a debate, that second they will say bye-bye. The second they notice that you are weak, you are not confident, you don't have knowledge, and you don't speak Arabic, they will be all over you. They will be lying up to debate you. That is the truth. Then I, I don't want to say anything about him because he's not here. Oh, okay. But, but uh, falling from the correspondence and the way things were going, uh, I, I felt that you know, pe people. Uh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. Yeah. What if I ask him a question from my book? My book. My book. He have it now, right? He will study it. He will not be able to answer. When you read my books, you will notice that there is a treasure of information there. Information you never heard before. And I'm sure he himself, he was astonished. Listen, when you see Muslims reading my book, shouldn't they make videos, tons of videos refuting me in my book? Shouldn't they? Nada. I have thousands of disasters in my books. Not a single Muslim dare to open a page and say, look what he is saying. Actually, there's one, a potato. He made a video about my book, uh, Six in Allah, and he says, we cannot find this hadith. And then it took me two minutes to get them busted, all of them. 
Pifi and her sister, I don't know her name, you know, and I found in the hadith. They said it's not exist. Ha ha ha. Where is that hadith? <laughs> we can't find it. What an embarrassment. Anyway, I hope we have a good time together today. And as you see, Islam is collapsing. Muslims are bashing each other. They do not know what to say or what not to say. I advise the Muslims to see a shrink, all of them, and I'm willing to take them all. Or they can join the shrink, their new shrink. Uh, he's a pimp shrink. He will use a webcam business to make you understand the world, you know, in a better way. Look at him. Subhanallah. He looked like a perfect genius. And you can visit him in jail very soon after. You know, you know the thing, right? I mean, don't forget to send them halawa to the jail. Huh? Yeah. Look at this video. Uh, no, but you're human. Uh, Harun Hat, uh, so, uh, uh, Hatun Hatun. I mean, I like her videos. She makes short videos, actually. They take time to make them, by the way, those videos. She's doing good with those videos. Look at this video. Look at this idiot. Trafficker by the lover boy method. I said, what's that? It's where you pretend to love them. So what, being nice? He, guys, he's being nice. He's being nice to the girls he is sleeping with. He's making them open their legs for the camera, making millions of dollars. He's being nice to them. I mean, do you see the charity? Do you see the nobility? Do you see how noble he is and how they are biting his charity work? The pimp camera business was a charity. Helping them, being nice to them. Disgusting girls. Disgusting. No, but you're human trafficker by the lover boy method. I said, what's that? It's where you pretend to love them. So what, being nice? So I was nice to some girls 10 years ago? Is, is that my crime? I, I, that, maybe I did love them. But we're not together anymore, so what? I pretended? Who said I pretended? Prove I pretended to love them. Prove it. And then what did I pretend to love them to achieve? I was all about trying to get paid. Like, my whole... I used sex as a tool to make women love me so they'd obey me and live in my house to make me money. <laughs> so yeah, on corporatetech.com, I have my PhD program, and that is a uh, PhD is a uh, pimp and hose degree that I'm... Who said I pretended? Prove I pretended to love... And then what did I pretend to love them to achieve? That teaches basically how I got girls, how I met girls, how I got girls to like me, how I got girls to fall in love with me to work on webcam for me. 2433. <laughs> Okay, so basically it's saying... Go back. Do you have a proof of it? I mean, do you see? I mean, you cannot debate the, the Ali Dawa because the Ali Dawa will, will refute Ali Dawa. Ali Dawa, God can't be inside this creation. Then Ali Dawa make a video says, God can be inside this creation. I mean, they, those people, nobody can debate them because they debate themselves, they debunk themselves. And this is stupid. He's. I mean, this is how smart he is. He's saying proof that I did that. What is the proof? This donkey, he forgot all the million videos he was posting bragging about how he fooled women. Can you believe it how stupid he is? And this is the smart one who will make you have a good future? My friend, you might get rich, but doesn't make you smart. Because what your richness would do if you are going to spend the coming 25, 30 years in jail. I don't want the millions of dollars. If this guy now he go to jail, eh, the punishment between maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 years, maybe 18 years, maybe more, we don't know. You go now 35. He's 35 or 36, something like that, right? You leave, you know, you will leave the jail and you are 56 or 50 years old. Every day in jail is a priceless. Freedom, my friend, is priceless. If you go to jail because you are a hero, I will say, you know what, God bless you. But you are a pimp. The accusation itself is a shame and you are conf confessing your, your crime. What the money will do to you. 
This guy, he thought that his money, he went to Romania. He said why he went to Romania, because he would bribe them. He said to himself, this is a corrupt country. Ah, I mean, uh, uh, imagine what, what, uh, what a judge will do when he see a hundred thousand dollar. A Romanian judge. Man, he would worship me. He never thought he would come to this. And all of those things he said in his videos. And now the stupid he is saying, what is the proof that I did play the lover boy tactic, which is listed in the human traffic of European Union? The human traffic, there's sanctions about what the human trafficking mafia they do. One of the tech tactic they use, very famous one, is the lover boys. Either they hire young men who they are good looking to go and search for girls in the internet and date them and buy them expensive bags and dresses, restaurants, a holiday vacation, so they can use to luxury. And then he say, well, I'm out of money. You know what? I have a friend. His name is Andrew Tits. He want to help. Oh, what you need to do is just go to the room in his villa, open your legs. A lot of money will come. This is what they do. And he himself, he confess in his videos about what he's doing. By the lover boy method. I said, what's that? It's where you pretend to love them. So what, being nice? So I was nice to some girls 10 years ago? Is, is that my crime? I, I, that, maybe I did love them. But we're not together anymore, so what? I pretended? Who said I pretended? Prove I pretended to love. And then what did I pretend to love them to achieve? I was all about trying to get paid. Like my whole, I used sex as a tool to make women love me so they'd obey me and live in my house and make me money. I use sex as a tool to make women love me and obey me. So they live in my house and make me money. That statement will cost him at least 10 years in jail. Just 15 second statement. 15 second statement. This is how stupid he is. He go and do a you know, public interview bragging about what he do. And now he is saying that they are accusing me because I told some girls to make a video in TikTok. That's not what you said. What TikTok? How much money they make in TikTok, they are saying now. What TikTok, you idiot? What camera business? They have hundreds of pages case for him, and he's talking about what? He, there's no proof. In the same time, many of the stupid, naive people, they think that this guy is conservative. And he is against the woke culture. Why? Because he is against feminine. Only stupid people, they will see him as conservative. The same as a trucker Carson. Those are scumbags. Conservative, conservative is not somebody against just the woke culture. Conservative is somebody, he is concerned about ethic. Who is this guy to be the one who is concerned about ethic, a pimp, a criminal, a man who use women, young women who never did prostitution before. And this is what make it even more ugly. He bring girls, they never ever had a prostitution business ever. He dragged them to this dirty garbage business just to make money. They are like cows for them. Conservative is someone he is concerned about every bad ethic in the society, not only about bad light and transgender and woke culture. No, this is not conservative. A person who sleep around is not conservative. A person who take drugs is not conservative. A thief. I mean, you name it. So don't fool. Don't make them fool you. They claim to be the hero. He opposed the vaccine. What does that mean?
there's millions of people oppose it and that make you conservative so there's many naive young men they think of this guy highly because they are so stupid ignorant they don't see farther they are just blinded by the exp this is why he buy those expensive cars because those kids when they see those cars they saliva come out like dogs they want to be rich like him he take pictures and videos of himself with the beautiful girls with short skirts and those young 20 21 23 25 they look look what he have with him look at this sport car this is two million euro car look at the girls around him man i want to live like this and then he suck their money he make you more poor three hundred dollars to join his course how much you pay me to join my course zero if somebody want to help you he will spend his time volunteer he will not ask you for money this guy he have his net worth at least 300 million dollars not including the real estate he own right now in Romania and the cars why he's charging 300 dollars for a poor person who want to go and have a business you want to learn how to be rich don't you want to help the young ones your fan those are your fan you see how helpful he is After all the 300 million dollars he have in his pocket, did he have enough? No. He want to make more and more and more and kill your children. And if your children, he like him, that because you are stupid, the father. You did not take care of your children. You did not teach him since young age not to listen to such a scumbag. Those cannot be our best example. Those are the worst example. Isn't it a very shameful? that a pimp a pimp is the one when a school society about ethic literally a pimp is not somebody accusing him of, you know he say he is a pimp he announced that he is a proud of and he opened a course and classrooms to teach you how to be a pimp how by foreign women So my friends, don't let the foolish one fool you. Their end is a disaster. Unless you care to have an end like them. And money, all of us, we need money. All of us, we have needs. But you cannot buy everything with money. Those people are lying to you when they say to you, you can buy everything with money. Is he going to buy his freedom out by money? Let us see. And actually his weakness now that he is famous. You know, if, if nobody know him, maybe he can bribe the judge in Romania. You know what I mean? If there's not too many cameras and journalists and, you know, a lot of lighting, his money might save him. He might save him from his evil until one day somebody, his daughter is used and abused, he go after him. Trust me. Always the end for those people is bad. There's a lot of people who hate them for what they did. Somebody, his daughter was a victim of him. Somebody, his sister was a, a victim of him. You never know what, what people they can do when they lose their mind. Do you play any video game? Is that really important? Is that a question now you ask me? Video game? Look what I'm thinking about and look what this guy is asking me. Do you play a video game? Oh, have mercy. Do you think someone like me have time to strip at games? If you spend your time, let me give you an advice. If you spend your time to play video games, I'm telling you, you are killing yourself. Time goes so fast. You are 20 years old now. Trust me, you will be 50 in no time. 
and then you wish that every minute you spend stupid game doing stupid games you wish to take it back what stupid game what what those games would do to you go read educate yourself search work work help your family build the build life you know buy a house buy a property uh, get married be a man don't what what game game you wanna you wanna shoot join the army this is how real men they do they don't go and shoot in the game i will send you to the j course you know the j course they will send you to hawaii in the jungle let us see how good you are not in a game like andrew tetz he hold a rifle in his hand he never been in a war he never shot up a bullet in a war i am sure if he go in war he will be doing pipi Real men, my friend, is those who do act like men, live like men, and die like men. They don't play games, they don't play video games, and they don't carry rifles for a sparrow. And they are not pimps. Don't waste your time. Advice from me to you, I'm not making fun of you. What games? Especially those who spend the whole day playing games. You lose your eyesight. You lose your money. Do you know much how much those games they cost? Between the uh, the station, the computer, the TV, the equipment, the speaker, the headphone, the game itself, you lost a lot of money. So what you did, and not to mention how much time you are getting. When I was I, I was a kid. I used to walk at least 45 minutes just to go to the library to read, walking, walking, on my feet, in the very disgusting, scary sun. Every day. Today you have the internet, you can find books, you can read, nobody want to read, they want to play games. And when I arrive to the library, I want to go to the adult section where you can read real books, not Mickey Mouse. I was just a kid, I'm talking about very, um, like in the size of your leg. And then in order to get in the adult section where real books are, when I say adult doesn't mean uh, porn, you know, I'm talking about like books for, for adult, uh, not for kids. So I wait for somebody coming inside the library in that section, and I walk next to him. So the guy, the guard, he will think I am his son. So he will let me get in. And then he go, he sit in the table, I sit next to him because I cannot go and ask for a book. And then people leave books in the table, so I grab any book in the table to read it. Do you see how difficult it was for me even to read books? And then after some time, they notice me and they kick me out because they notice every day he come and every day he have a new person coming with him. <laughs> anyway, so this is why there is people, they wanna, they wanna be shallow in life they never learn anything. They have zero education. Education is not a degree. Education is not even a school. It's not a certificate. Education is you educating yourself, reading, learning, thinking, putting information together. Build your mind library. Not a degree. In the army, you cannot click save uh, 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 and load button. Um, yeah, in the army, they will. You know, you see, the army actually is good for young ones because it like it, it train you how to be organized to switch you from the spoiled, easy civilian life, you know, to very tough life. Especially, uh, like, depend what where you go. Like, you know, like I mentioned the J course, the one they do in the, the jungle course in Hawaii. Uh, you know, from from a hundred people, maybe. Uh, maybe 50 they will pass so when you join the army uh, you will you change you yourself you change there's a huge difference will happen in a few weeks from a spoiled person who is mom she come to his room son do you want tea what do you like to eat for breakfast to a drill surgeon coming and shouting in your head stop you your stupid idiot stand up then you will notice that life is not what you saw, it's not what you see in your mom house. A young man 
he will transform so fast from a spoiled from a loser maybe game nothing in life to a person who is very organized a lot of responsibility and a very tough life and this is a good thing actually for a child I mean somebody is just young and 18 years old will, will put you in the field of real men fast not someone like Andrew Tits he don't make you a man he make you a pimp Can you make a video on Hamza Deen? Okay, I mean, I, I make video about everybody, but this guy is not worth it. He's just a so stupid. I mean, the, the famous one, we are making them shish kebab. Who is this guy? No, they are just a stupid idiot. Anyway. And I advise you, if you have a children, not to spoil them. You know the word spoil? What spoil mean? Spoil mean damaging. So when you spoil your children, you damage them. Make them work. Even if they are young. The young one, tell him, go and cut the grass out. Let me see. I will watch you. Watch them to be sure they are not going to get hurt. Teach them how to work. Teach them how to make money from, from real work. Tell him, son, if you wanna, if you cut the grass, I will give you five dollars. Show him that he can make money by working, and show him that money doesn't not come easy. I advise you all of you, if you have a children, to teach your children in a very young age the value of work. Work is a value. It's not about money. Work is a value. Work, work is an ethic. Work is religion. Work is from God. Isn't it Jesus? He says, my father work and I work too. If you don't teach your child in a very young age to wake up early in the morning, clean his room, prepare his bed, dress himself, and do something useful, he will be a lazy potato couch for the rest of his life. All unsuccessful people, they were spoiled children. You will notice that somebody coming from India, he is coming from a poor family, he become a CEO of Google. And somebody is born of a billionaire, he is a loser. It's true. He is just a loser. All the children, most of them, of those actors and artists and etc., they die from drugs. Those who they are coming from poor countries, they are more successful. Why? Because life was tough on them. They learned the value of work. They learned the value of working hard and making life good. They don't wait for life to give them good. They make it good. In America, I never saw at least in my area, an Asian is begging for money or an Indian begging for money. But I see white people. I see African black people, American born. Why? How come a person, he come from the Middle East, he have a gas station? He's immigrant. He come with no money. Why somebody came up from India? He used to have a bicycle in India and now he have a company. And then a person who is born in this country, black or white, he is begging for money in the street, sleeping in a tent in San Francisco. Something wrong. My friend, this guy Bobby is a scammer, don't you notice? All, all the idea, those people is uh, is to get more uh, more review and making money from their channel. It's a business. This guy, he said that his wife is a Muslim. So how he converted to Islam? He's married to a Muslim woman since a long time ago in Dubai. He said that in his video. They are a scam. You know, this is always a scam. 
And let us say he converted to Islam and, you know, so the patriarch. <laughs> Why those people are important for you? Who convert, convert, who leave, leave. This is not our issue. The issue is the topic. It's not the person. Only if we are silly, we focus in the person. When I, when I laugh at Ali Dawa, I'm not laughing at him. I'm laughing at Islam. If somebody convert to Islam, or maybe he did not convert, many people, they are doing it just for business. If you make a video says, I am an ex-Muslim, convert to Christianity. How many click you will have? None. I will give you an example, Sheikh Omad. How many people they go, even I promote his channel. Yeah, five, a video he made a year ago, he have 3,000 view. If he say, I left to Christianity and I converted to Islam. How many people will click at his channel? Because even YouTube will push it in the front. We know the business. Shish kebab? Yeah, no problem. We will try. You know, and remember, Religion cannot be good or bad because of the number. We are number one faith in this earth. Almost three billion human beings. But that does not mean Christianity good. Not because of numbers. What about Christianity when Jesus have only few disciples? Was it bad? What number mean? Nothing. Quality is what going to be count. The quality. Not the quality only of the people, the quality of the faith itself. This is the most important. So if the whole world became an atheist, does that mean atheism is the right thing? No. How many people they smoke? I never smoke a cigarette. Ever. And I will never do. I never took drugs. And I don't even drink. If I drink maybe once every year or two years. Little, tiny drink. In the size of your the bomb of the cup. So don't, you know, don't focus in silly stuff. Focus in what is important. Here we beat the topic, not the person. We don't care for the person. The reason I'm talking about this guy, Andrew Tits, because many people, they consider him as a guideline for them, which is very dangerous. Otherwise, he's nobody. He's a pimp. I mean, it's even, it's even not be fit to me to talk about such a low-class person. The important is the truth, is not a person. This is not about you and me and he and she. This is about what is the truth. The truth will set you free. Those who focus, someone is celebrity, celebrity he converted to Christianity. Why? Why is so big deal? You know, once one of you sent me like a 20, I opened Patreon, I found like a 20 email from this guy, Christian Prince. Did you receive my previous email? And he emailed me again. Please, can you make a video about this guy? He's converted to Christianity. I didn't know his name. What? I forgot his name. He's a, he's a singer. He's, he's, you know, he, he's a kid, like he's very young. I forgot his name. Yeah. And I said, what the, I mean, I made me angry. I said, why is so big deal? If this famous singer become a Christian, what's what what is the exactly what is the like what is the miraculous event? They worship not God, they worship celebrity. Honestly, people they don't care really for God, they care for a celebrity. Like just tell them a celebrity he become. Justin, yeah, his name is Justin. Justin, the guy, Justin, he, and I searched for his name, he's a, he's a kid. I have nothing against him. But I mean, what is the big deal? So if this guy is not famous and he become a Christian, he's not important for you. They don't worship God from both sides, Christians or Muslims or Hindus. Right? They worship light, celebrity. Put light on somebody and you will see everybody bow down. Pagans. People are pagans. What about somebody is poor, homeless in the street, and he accepted Jesus? 
Isn't it him more important than a celebrity? No, he's not. We worship stars. What if this guy, Elon Musk, he say, I'm a Christian now? The whole world will talk about it. Why? Because he's rich. Because people are evil. Worship money. People are evil. They worship no God. They worship money. In the Middle East, we say, two things people don't talk about. A crime of a rich and a funeral of a poor. When a rich person, he commit a bigger crime because he's powerful, people fear him, nobody talk. When a poor person die, nobody go in the funeral. Just let somebody, you know, famous rich die, millions will be in the street. They don't even know him. He never spoke to them. Crying, shouting, Michael Jackson died. People are crying, making videos, cannot believe it, he died. <laughs> Human being, I mean, what a species. <laughs> I'm, I don't mean to insult anybody. But just think about it and tell me if I am not telling the truth. Isn't it, this is the truth? This is the truth. If you are if you are famous, everybody will be in your funeral. If you are poor, even your brother will not go there. Well, as an example in the Middle East. If you are a millionaire in America and you go to the Middle East, you will find the whole family there, the whole tribe waiting for you. If you are poor, nobody invites you. Nobody, oh, he came? Oh, okay, when I was busy, I sorry, I could not see you. But if you are a person who is rich and they knew you also, everybody become your cousin. Everybody want to invite you. If you are poor, nobody say hello. You call them, they don't answer. Even if you invite them for a wedding, like you, let's say your son is getting married, they will not come. If you are rich, they will die to get a ticket to the wedding. That's the truth. And many, they claim to be religious, and they have ethic too. A brother, he deny his brother if he is poor. Yeah. Especially in the Middle Eastern society. Very corrupt society, very ugly. The same family, if somebody is a doctor, everybody proud about him. If the other person, he's, he's a brother, let us say he clean garbage in the city, his employee in the city, he collect garbage. Oh, he's not my brother, I don't know him. Yeah. However, at the end of the day, for us, appreciation is the key of happiness, is not how much money you have. If you appreciate what you have, you are going to be happy even if you have cancer. Do you know what cancer means? You are dying. You are dying. If you appreciate what you have, trust me, you are happy. And if you don't appreciate, it doesn't matter what kind of house you have, how much big the money you have, you will never be happy. You know, I went to many countries and I met many kind of people. I went to houses of people, they are so poor. And look how welcoming they are. You know, I mean, they welcome me. They have nothing in the house. There's no house. There's holes in the roof. Uh, the the wall is like dark because they cook inside one room. Uh, I mean, they, they have nothing. And I found them, they are more stable than people who have cars. People who have cars and palaces and villas, they see shrink. <laughs> I'm serious. 
they go and see shrink they take stress drugs they take uh, depression drugs they take all kind of drugs and they are and they commit suicide and then the poor who is really poor he have nothing he's not thinking about committing suicide he is not thinking about seeing a shrink you know he can't afford to see a shrink anyway he is not really he's not, he's not like desperate he's he's fine even his life is miserable i mean there's you, you look at his life you say Man, I'm so lucky to compare what this guy here. But the one who is wealthy is the one who is depressed, unhappy, complaining. He see doctors, he take medicine, he is unhealthy, and he is so worried about his life. He's worried about tomorrow. The one who have nothing, he's not worried. Actually, you notice that the one who is poor, he spend more than the one is rich. The poor one spend money more than the rich you might say how in the world i mean they don't even have money how they can spend no you compare you know when a poor man he have 10 dollars and he spent a dollar that means he just spent 10 percent of his fortune when a when a rich man he have a million what he spent he spent 10 dollars <laughs> usually rich people are the most cheap people ever for sure not everybody but usually because how they get so rich, usually, usually, not everybody, by being so cheap. So the more they earn money, the more they are worried about not having enough money. The poor, he knew he had no money, he is going to make money anyway. So he spent. He spent. He don't have a hope tomorrow he will be a millionaire, billionaire. No, he go to work, he feed his kids. He buy a little gift to his wife, a dress, whatever, that's it. But he spend money more than rich. And if a rich he spend, he spend to show off, not because he's happy. He spend to show off. Not for the sake of happiness. You will notice that those who buy brand... Either they are under the influence of her friends, they did not think about it, or they are trying to show off. They are not satisfied with themselves. So I will buy a brand. I will buy expensive watches, expensive rings, expensive phones. Why? Because I want to show off. I'm not satisfied. I am not confident. How, you know, I'm afraid that people will judge me. What I'm wearing, I will wear a shoe. Ten dollars? No way! I'm going to buy the most expensive shoe, but trust me, nobody is looking at your shoe. You look stupid with that. Who care about your shoes? And if a friend will offend you because of your shoe, show him. <laughs> you will see. You go to to Asia, like some uh, Asian countries. Uh, you will see somebody like he have a phone, iPhone thirteen iPhone 13 why you have iPhone how much money you make come on I mean the guy he spend half of his year salary for a phone that I call it stupid why because he want to show off he want to be like the rich this is under the influence you see I mentioned there's two kind the one under the influence and the one who want to show off the one under the influence, he tried to copy the one who they sound like they are rich or they appear to be. He want to be like them. He want to show off. Anyway. Uh, your converts show correctly. Those thoughts and actions have become morally accepted even to born again Christians anyway you know it, it's at the end of the day it's up to you to adopt the life you think it's correct for you but uh, uh, I believe strongly that appreciation is the key of happiness you know my favorite food is tomato my favorite food is tomato tomato you know tomato salt bread so if you put it in front of me a very fancy food and whatever fancy you can you can call fancy and then you say to me 
I have uh, like a, a, a few tomatoes and salt and bread. Which one you would take? My favorite is tomato. I love it. And I appreciate it. So when I eat such a, you know, very humble lunch, I'm happy. <laughs> I feel so good. For a very simple reason, I appreciate what I have, even though it's just tomato. I mean, many of you wouldn't say, well, I mean, how that even can be a lunch? Bread, tomato, little salt. This is a lunch. That's it. Yes, that's it. I love it. And this is since I was a kid. It's not like something new. Even my mom, she used to shout at me, we eat the lunch soon, is going to be ready. I eat a tomato. I get tomato, I cut it, I eat tomato, bread and salt. I'm so happy. So I learned since I was a kid that you can design your happiness. You can find what makes you happy. And usually is not about how much you are spending or how what people say about you it's how you can be confident in what you you know what you want you know what you like if you try to copy others just because they are shiny in front of you you are just for yourself don't copy anyone don't eat in fancy restaurants don't I don't really enjoy food in a fancy restaurant. I don't. I eat like once a day and I eat a lot. Big meal. I'm saying tomato. I mean big made tomatoes. So if people are looking at me, I mean, what this guy is doing? I mean, is he going to eat all this food? I eat once a day. I don't enjoy it. And you know how much money I will spend in a fancy restaurant to, to fill my stomach? What What is fun about it? So I prefer a very humble lunch, which is good for me, make me happy, I'm satisfied, and nobody fooled me with a big bill for no food. I remember once in, uh, I was in the Philippines, the, I make an order in the image, in the menu, it looked nice dish, you know? And then she, she came and she put the dish in front of me, it's, it's in the size of an uh, uh, ashtray. I said, what is this? She said, uh, this is your dish, sir. Are you sure? Isn't it, isn't it a sample? You know, she said, no, this is your dish. So for me to eat, to have my, 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 my day food, I need to open like to, to order like eight, nine dishes like those small, tiny one. And the price is really was expensive. You go to a humble restaurant for the same money you order that dish, you can eat five dishes. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't like, I, I like potato, but it's not my favorite. Actually, there's a dish I like you to, to learn about it. You can make, make mashed potato and then mix it with uh, a slice, very small slice of uh, 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 tomato and uh, uh, onion, add some garlic, some salt and olive oil, and you will see how tasty it is with the bread for sure. This is one of my favorite dishes too. <laughs> Anyway, it's not really what you eat, it's what makes you happy. That is what counts. There is people who eat the most expensive food and they are not satisfied. They are actually they are not even eating. They go there, they are sitting, they hold the fork. People are watching, you know, like and, you know, he's they are just a showtime. It's like a, a social club. This why this is how I see a restaurant. I eat in a restaurant only when I travel because I don't maybe have a kitchen or I cannot even cook. So only this time I, I will eat in a restaurant. Otherwise, in my house, I never go in my city. I never go ever to a restaurant. A Muslim that uh, said that good first that make him a Muslim is Surah uh, 5, Surah 5, 8. Okay. Well, why you don't bring him here and then we can discuss what make him a Muslim? 
And I find it very funny that a person saying a verse made him a Muslim. That is the most stupid thing. So the whole Quran could not make him a Muslim, but a verse did. <laughs> you know, it's like saying there is one screw in the car made me buy the car. You know what I mean? It's not the car. There's a screw. So obviously this guy is an idiot. So 5-8, what about 5-7? It's not, Allah did not do his job. The whole Quran verses, Allah could not convince him except on, this is a failure. <laughs> oh boy. Same time, if you go to chapter five, the one you mentioned to me, you will see this is the most hilarious chapter in the Quran. Uh -uh. And I will go to the verse uh, you you mentioned. Bear witness to justice. Okay, can a Muslim be justice by following the Quran? The Quran says, in the case of murder, free for the free, black for the black, or stay for a slave, women for the women. Is that justice? Here we go. Bear justice. Bear justice. A man he can beat his wife. Bear justice, steal the money of the Christian and the Jews and rape the women. Bear justice, you can have sex with the children. Beat your wife. So where is justice? Justice in Islam is an awkward word. It sounds like justice, the one we use, but have a different value. It's an opposite. Is it just that this God in the same book says, kill the Christian and the Jews and take their money? Is it just to say that a Muslim should not be killed for murdering non-Muslim? But if a Muslim, he murder a Muslim, he will be killed? Is that just? So the Muhammadan, they use certain words, sound good to you, because it's the same word we use, justice. But justice in Islam is evil. All right? So only foolish one, he will say such a statement. Anyway, you know, you can ask him to call me. He's welcome. And I will be happy to take him. Let us see how how he like the Quran. Uh, restaurant in USA is costly. You know, my friend, restaurant is a place of... of uh, it's, it, you go to a restaurant to entertain yourself, not to eat. It's not about food. People who want to spoil themselves, they go to a restaurant. In other way, you know, you are being lazy. I can accept that you have a guest and you cannot take you cannot take him home. So you take him to a restaurant, no problem. But, or maybe you're a business person, businesswoman, businessman, you don't have time. Okay, this is, this is a different story. Your income is so high, you don't have time for cooking and making food, then you go to a restaurant. But most of people, they go to a restaurant, it's not for the food. The food is not the purpose. It is a state of entertainment and luxury. You sit in the table, someone comes to you, says to you, what do you like to eat, sir? You love it. Now I'm being called sir, and there is somebody serving me. You pay for it, you know, and then you start thinking um, and you look at this waitress or this waiter and you start like, mm, do you have, you know, it's like a time where a, a human being, he he enjoy his uh, uh, like uh, ego, you know, like he is the master now. He's the he is the one in charge. He have servants serving him. So a restaurant is not really about food, especially the fancy ones. It's about doing social, uh, luxury style, uh, showing off, uh, you know, it's not about food. That's why the price you pay have nothing to do with the food you ate. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, they, they give you, let us say, uh, a quarter pound of, of, uh, of beef, and then you ch they charge you $70. I mean, is that the price of the beef, really? No. Uh, you don't agree with me in the what point? No problem. 
For me, I see that people go to a restaurant, especially fancy ones, to show off and for luxury purpose, not to enjoy. Otherwise, you enjoy this. Uh, for me, I don't enjoy it. For me, I don't enjoy luxury clothing. I don't enjoy, and I never wear a suit, and I will never wear one. I never wear a tie, and I will never wear one. I don't dress as people want me to dress, and I don't care what people think. I have an old car, and I don't care if people like it or not. And uh, I'm happy with my life. People are different. You know? People are different. Uh, suit for a wedding even if I get married I will not wear a suit <laughs> I mean I did wear a suit long long time ago and I it, this is why I don't wear it because I, I feel like I'm in jail it's like a prison and then they ask you to put this thing around your neck you feel like you're a dog it's like somebody have a leech around your neck I don't know how in the world I mean, who is the stupid idiot who come with this uniform? You know, you will see yourself in like, let us say, 30, 40 years from now, look so silly and stupid, the same as European one day. They used to put makeup on their face and they have a wig. Do you, did you see them? I mean, how silly, how stupid. But at that time, it was fine. Makeup, a wig, on a man. And those are the nobles. And this is what you will see about yourself. Maybe 50 years from now, you will laugh at yourself. Maybe 200 years from now, let's see. Uh, how people used to dress. A suit. A tie. Uh, my friend, I answered you. I said, okay, I will make a video once. We will see about the shish kebab for Muhammad. No problem. I answered you. Do you wear like Al Fadi? No, I wear. I like to wear casual. I don't dress uh, any formal dress. Uh, who will inherit your wealth if you don't have a child? Is that what I'm worried about? Who is going to inherit my wealth? <laughs> and what wealth? <laughs> my friend, uh, wealth, the wealth I have, I'm very thankful for whatever I have. You know, I, I can't say I don't have wealth because I believe having a roof is a wealth. Having uh, a light, electricity, uh, this is a wealth. Security, safety, uh, food in the table, this is a wealth. However, my friend, why you are worried about who and going to inherit my wealth? My wealth is already given to you and your children. One day I will die and all my books and my videos are there. That is my wealth. Your wealth is not money. At the end of the day, they will put some dust on you. Some of friends, maybe they will put some tears on your grave. And maybe some they will gossip about you. And then second day, people will forget about you very simple so don't worry about who is going to take your wealth you don't have wealth the house you live in now somebody else before you he used to own it and live in it and maybe he died he, he have wealth no do you have it no even the house you own you don't own it you will not take it with you none of the things you see in your house look at them right now zero of them zero of them belong to you nothing so don't think about your wealth. You have nothing. The only thing you have is the work you did through your, through your life and how the Lord will, will remember you, your name. The Lord, he said, from their fruits you shall know them, not from their wealth. Why I want to worry about who is going to take my wealth, if I have any.
You know, I know a story of a guy. He is very, very rich, but he's very, very cheap. And this is a true story. And even, even, even his son, he is actually relative to me. Uh, but he's very cheap, extremely cheap. His father, he owned many gas stations, many, so many, and he owned even those the big trucks, the, you know, the uh, uh, the convoy for for oil. I mean, he's so so rich. One day, his father was driving, and uh, the road blocked with the snowstorm. The police, they blocked the road, because anyway, you cannot drive. So they told everybody, there is a hotel there. Uh, they have even the, like, uh, the, uh, the government uh, trucks, big trucks for the army, to carry the passengers who they are stuck in that location, to carry them to the nearest hotel. This guy, who is a very rich man, he refused to go to the hotel. Why? He didn't want to pay money. He said, don't worry about me, I'm going to stay in my car. Second day, they found him dead. Dead. He was so cheap to the point he died because of his how cheap he is. And then his son, he inherited. His son, he changed car every few months. He spent like crazy because his father was driving them not about how cheap he is. He don't even allow them to bring friends to their houses because they don't want to serve coffee. Madness. And then he died like a rat. All the money he saved is gone to his son and his son is spent wherever he go. He's the opposite of his dad. Keep saving. <laughs> My friend, Knights, you told me. I, I Even I put the verse you asked me for in the screen. What's wrong with you? Are you going to keep posting this? What's wrong with people? Almost then he liked those verses. Okay, we answered you. And what about all the garbage we show every day here? He's like two verses, three verses in the Quran. <laughs> Let us assume in the Quran there is 10 verses they are good. What about the rest? <laughs> uh, crazy people. Oh boy. Yeah, you are rich as, uh, as how much you enjoy your worth. And worth... Uh, the the point the, the the word worth can be different from person to person a villager he have a few chickens and a goat this is his worth and he enjoy it uh, a billionaire who is like uh, Elon Musk he have uh, he own uh, tons of billions of dollars I don't know if he is happy uh, because I think his life is not really a happy life you know, uh, those people, they, they can't even move ar around without security, without bodyguards, uh, without, I mean, your life is different. So you gain something, you lose a lot. Always when you gain, you lose. There's no gain without lose. Never. You gain wisdom, you get older. All right? You gain only when you lose. You don't gain without losing. You become a celebrity, you lose. You don't have a freedom to walk in the street. People chase you. People who love you, people who hate you. You can't even sit in a coffee shop to drink your coffee like anyone. You lose. This is why people who uh, worship fame they are making the biggest mistake in their life. Because your life is not a happy life no more. There is intruder everywhere you go. You can't even have a normal life. But still, there's a lot of people worship to be famous. Like there is, a, there is an actor, she is a very old lady. Uh, they used to talk about her before. Uh, 
in a newspaper magazine, looked like she was famous before. I saw her news, and maybe this is like five or six years ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, nobody talked about her. So what she did, she is 80-something. She took naked pictures of herself in the, in, the, in the shower tub and posted online. Why? Because she wants people to talk about her again. Look so bad. She just want to seek, seek attention. And yeah, she become like very, again, in the newspaper, you know, but in a funny way, people making fun of her. So there is some people, they are wise, and there is people who they are fool. The wise, he don't seek uh, uh, the glory of, of what, what the world think it's a glory, to be famous. Uh, a wise person, he seek to live good, to be happy. Famous not what make you happy. It doesn't. A lot of people will hate you. A lot of people will love you. And you are lost between. You might even be threatened. You might even get killed. And then when you become celebrity, your life is expensive. So the more money you make, the more poor you are. Because now you have to fit with the new uh, lighting you are in. You know, like now you are famous. You have to spend. You know, what car you have, what what house you live in. You will see that someone like Michael Jackson, he died and he have a, you know, he borrowed from Muslims more than $6 million. After all the money he made, he's borrowing money. He don't even, he cannot even pay for his shopping in Dubai. Dubai is the center of a fraud where people, they are trapped into money, spending. This is what they do. They invite someone, a celebrity, and they tell him, hey, sit in the hotel as much as you want. This is what they did with Michael Jackson. He stayed there almost a year for free in the hotel. They told him for free. This is what they made him understand. And then when he decided to leave, they told him, listen, Michael, you have to pay. Oh, you, the prince, he invited me here. Yeah, no, the prince, he says, welcome to the country. He didn't say he will pay your bill. However, if you convert to Islam, the prince is willing to pay your bill. Michael Jackson was going to convert to Islam a week after he will go to the mosque to say the Shahada. A week after. And he died before he did it. So his bills will be paid you will notice that all those people who speak about converting to Islam they convert in Dubai and rotates uh, what is the other person uh, Sneeko uh, the, the one you mentioned his name Bobby all this is all, all this is from the money the worth of Dubai you know the, those people are worshipping money, and this is where the money is. Yeah. How can I make transcript in English? Uh, there is somebody have my video already in English. My video, you mean you mean Sheikh uh, uh, Hisham? Yeah, somebody he have it already in English. Just search for it so you can download it. <coughs> Give a chance to Christians to call me once a week. No problem, we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Anyway, you know, the Muslims, they believe that everybody have a price. And this is coming from the Quran. You see the Quran speak about the Mu'allafa Qulubahum. Al Mu'allafa Qulubahum. What does that mean? People who don't believe, they don't believe. So what we do? 
we buy them. Islam is a scam, literally. This is in the Quran. The money the Muslim they steal from a Christian and Jews can be used legally according to Allah teaching to buy the hearts of those who don't want to believe. But why Muslims they want to buy them? Because those are unable to conquer them. They are unable to conquer them. Usually they are maybe criminals like the family who rule after Muhammad, the Amawiyin. If you read this story here, chapter 9, verse number 60, it says here how they divide the money after the Muslim, they get their shares from the attack, and then the poor Muslim, they will get some, but this is nothing. But then you will see here, it says, and those who their heart are made inclined to truth. What does that mean? Somebody is powerful he have an army maybe uh, a leader a sultan a ruler by him a head of a tribe there is many like leaders let's say in africa a leader of tribe you know in africa if you give a million dollars it's a lot of money a lot of money Tell him if you convert to Islam, we will give you a million dollars. We will support you. He will. Not for sure, not everybody, but mostly. Why not? And then by that, his people will follow. He can read the interpretation for this, and he will see this has happened about a very aggressive family in Mecca. Muhammad could not conquer them and could not kill them. And later this family, the same family, they took over Islam and they became the Caliphate. And they are the same family who killed the grandsons of Muhammad and Muhammad family. So Muhammad, he bought them, later they killed his family. All right. This is the, this is the return of an evil act. He bought them. He thought by buying them, he won. Well, he won that they are criminals. But he forgot that the criminals, the first thing they do, they will bite you too. And this is exactly what they did later. They killed his family. Anyway, I think we have enough for today, and uh, I hope that we had a good time together. As you know, I don't keep my videos for long, so feel free to download them if you want, but soon I will do some cleaning to my channel, so feel free to download if you care to download. Otherwise, it's getting late here for me, and I better go, and I hope I will see you soon again. Maybe not tomorrow, we will see. Because uh, sometimes when you do come every day, people don't miss you, right? And they don't uh, appreciate your work, maybe. Like if you stay away for a few days, maybe they will, they will show up more. But anyway, we do what we need to do. And God is good. And we are happy to see the collapse of this cult. Muslims going all over. And if the video is long for you, you can cut the part where... Uh, you know, I'm showing the videos about those Muslims attacking each other and how Islam is strong. You can, you can shorten the video as you wish. All right. I want to say thank you guys. May the Lord bless you all. And uh, if I offend any one of you, uh, I, I'm not a person who apologize for offending because, you know, I'm an, I, I offend. It's part of my job to offend. But if I offend you, I'm not offending you because... Uh, the, you are my purpose, or let us say, uh, to make you uh, uh, feel bad, uh, just to put you down. I make people feel bad, so they can correct themselves, if they are doing wrong. 
If you care for people, you say to them the truth. If somebody's clothes is dirty, you say they are dirty. You don't say they are clean. You don't say they are clean. If somebody doing wrong, you say to him you are doing wrong. The one who agree about everything you say is not your friend, is your enemy. Trust me, he is your enemy. A true friend, he oppose you when you are wrong. And then by time you will notice, oh, I wish I listened to him. And then you will notice that he was a good friend. But maybe it's going to be too late. So always consider a friend who oppose you more than he agree with you. Usually those who agree about everything you say, either they don't have no they have no character, which means they are just a bunch of fools, or they are hypocrite. They don't care really what you do. In fact, maybe he is happy that you are stupid, so he don't want to correct you. So you look bad. You know, you will see a man, he is going to, to a meeting, and then he met all his employees. He is a, maybe a CEO of a company. Nobody told him that his zipper is open. Employees turn in their head, they are gossiping, they are laughing. Somebody want to take a selfie. And then there is a guy, you know, he is the janitor. You know, he's not the manager. Yeah. He says, sir, sir, your zipper is open. That is the guy. That's a good guy. The janitor. All those who make money from working for you, make living, none of them say to you, your zipper is open, either because they are afraid of you or because they are hypocrite. They praise you, however your condition is. But the janitor is a simple man. Yeah. Sir, your zipper is open. <laughs> that is better than all of them. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Anyway, I uh, hope that we have a good time. And always, uh, the Lord will bless us. Those who seek knowledge, they, re they receive it. And those who seek evil, evil will come to them. Uh, the wicked one, they will live wicked, they will die wicked, and they are going to be in the wicked heaven. Those who they have a good heart, even if they are victims, you know, you can be a victim because you have a good heart which may make you feel like you are a loser somebody use you somebody throw you somebody scam you you have a good heart you believe them even this one is a victorious because the wicked one he might have a victory now but what about tomorrow only foolish people they think they are victorious by being wicked the truth it is the opposite Totally the opposite. Anyway, I wish you a good time. For those who live in the state, happy 4th of July. And I'm so grateful that we are not part of England no more. Otherwise, we will have a pervert king like the king of England and a pervert family royal. They call them themselves royal when they are, the fact, a bunch of fornicators, liars, scumbag, money worshippers, and they have no value. And this is a great example about not to be fooled by the names and titles. Royals. What a royal. Until I see you again, I say, may the Lord bless you. And this is your brother Christian Prince was serving you humbly for today. Take care. Bye-bye.